All right, we're ready now for the opening pitch. And out there on the mound, Doc Ellis, Jim Wolford at the plate. Here's Keith Jacks. Jim Wolford, Al Collins, and George Brett. The top three men in the order for the Kansas City Royals. And Doc Ellis is on the mound. A 249 average for Jim Wolford. He's one for seven in the two games played in Kansas City. And you've got a two-ball, one-strike count as we begin game number three. This game, in the view of many people, so very, very important. Because if the Yankees can win it, it'll be nothing more than the split to claim the title. That is fouled away into the upper deck out of play. Number 36 wearing the blue pinstripe of the Yankees. Really makes it tough, Keith, when you say you can play 162 games and you can get down for a three-game series to decide whether you're going to be the champion or not. Jim Wolford out of Kansas City, Missouri, a native son of Visalia, California, takes from the second baller right-hander, Doc Ellis, ball two. So we have three ball, ball three it was, three and two now. And Doc Ellis loses. Jim Wolford walking the first man. Now, it is something that's been in everybody's mind since they moved into New York as to whether or not Doc Ellis would be able to keep Kansas City from running. Doc does not have a history of keeping runners particularly close to the base, and it puts a great deal of pressure on the catcher. And Thurman Munson had a couple of errors get away from him in Kansas City as the Royals got on base and did some running on him. That's going to have to be one of their tactics, Keith. We see a ball one. That's going to have to be one of their tactics, Keith, because of the fact that they are down in the power department. Mayberry has not hit a lot of home runs this year, and their top home run hitter, Amos Otis, has got a bad angle. He's going to miss the whole series, so they've got to apply pressure with speed. All right, Reggie, Al Cowens is up there right now. Wolford on first base. He stole 24 bases during the regular season. Doc Ellis is low. Al Collins for ball two. Ellis, however, is experienced in championship play. When with the Pirates, he did lose a toughie in ten innings to the Reds, three to nothing. He was one and two overall in championship series. Two balls and no strikes. The runner, Wolford, edges off first ball strike on Al Collins. Al Collins, two for eight in the championship series of the two games at his home park, Royal Stadium in Kansas City, where they set new attendance marks at both games. Throw to first, and Wolford is back, waiting on deck. George Brett, the American League batting champion. He will be the left-hander. There goes Wolford. The pitch swung on and missed, and Wolford steals it easy. It's two and two on the batter, and now have got a man at the far turn in scoring position. And he got a big, big jump on That's Doc Ellis. At the jump, Keith, which was big. And then Munson did something that he did not do Sunday night in Kansas City. Instead of the quick-release sidearm, he hesitated and threw overhand. That avoided the wild throw that he was guilty of on two occasions Sunday night. The now Yankees don't nobody. like him to throw sidearm. Right, nobody out now. Swing, and an ass is Collins chases. A curveball, it strikes out. Now you've got one out. And Wolford out there at second base. I think the guy right there on the camera, well, of course, that's Jimmy Wolford talking about Doc Ellis. For me, all season long, he was one of the toughest guys on their ball club. He's got an excellent singer and excellent slider. And there's the man I call, if he was, a, if the line drive looked like a human being, it'd be George Brett. It's 353 feet to straightaway right. 310 down the right field line, and the pitch is inside and low to George Brett. One out, and Jim Wolford is on second base for Kansas City at the top of the first inning. We've got a great shot right here. We'll see if they're going to try any strategy, see where they're going to try to pitch George Brett. They've got first base open. Will they try to pitch to him, or will they try to walk him? He hits it into right center field, drops in for a base hit. Wolford turns it third. He'll come to score, and George Brett delivers. He is a hitting machine. That makes him five for eight on the series. The leading hitter in the series. He's now at 625. He had gone into that turn at bat four for seven. I think that kind of goes along with the kind of a year he had. He's a leading hitter in the league, the leading hitter in the, in the series. That ball right there was a pretty good pitch by Doc Ellis. The ball was inside. Brett 
a guy that makes a tremendous amount of contact, broke his bat, yet he still drove in a run. John Mayberry, only 13 home runs. He has not hit a home run in the new version of Yankee Stadium. The pitch is inside, and they'll try to jam him. Ellis will try to keep it inside, because when you got a guy as big as Mayberry up there with a stick in his hand, he have got to worry about him. Here's one thing here. I believe that pitch right there was just a show-me pitch. They're going to show him inside and stay away from him all night. Yeah. Up the middle it goes. It should drop. It does. And here goes Brett around second, heading for third. Mayberry is on with a single to left center. So quickly the Royals are off and running. Obviously they were not taken aback by the dismal start in the first game of this series. And just as obviously they're not worried about the Yankee Stadium confines here because during the course of the season they won four and lost two against the Yankees right here. Al McRae. He's the next man to come to the plate, the designated hitter. So far, Hal McRae has not had a hit against Yankee pitching in the championship series. He's been on base one time from a walk. But you can see from his credentials on the season, you do not get careless with him. One out, two on. Bayberry at first, Brett at third. The pitch swung on and missed. Strike one. Watch the ball, Mac. Watch the ball now. Here we see a first and third situation. Hal McRae, an excellent hitter, 332 on the year, a guy that makes a tremendous amount of contact. And they're in double play depth, the second baseman and the shortstop. They're almost going to give him the run. Hit high to the right side. Should be playable, the right fielder. He's Coming got in. a good arm. He's got a good arm, Keith. We're going to play the play. By Brett. And he's safe. And came in high, hooked his spikes on home plate, and could very easily have hurt himself. Now, I don't think that Maddox got a good push off from the outfield. Don't think he made a real good, strong throw. He's shown a better arm than that in the past. All right, look at it again. You're exactly right. Elliot Maddox made a disappointing throw. He's got a much better arm than that. The ball dribbled into the plate, as you saw it there, and so the run across the plate. Two to nothing, the Kansas City Royals, top of the first. On the sacrifice fly by Hal McRae. Now coming to the plate, Tom Poquette. And Poquette standing at the plate looks very much like George Brett. Of course, there's a reason for that. It's a fellow named Charlie Lau, the hitting coach for the Royals. Pitches inside, gets away from Munson. And the base runner advances to second. So now you've got... Bases, second and third occupied. Keith, it looks like they've got a little work going out there in right field. Mayberry standing there on second. Big guy. Jimmy Wolford having scored. Al Cowan striking out swinging. George Brett singling. Getting Wolford home after Wolford stole second base. Mayberry then delivered with a single. Al McRae, the sacrifice fly. You see Brett Jackson in the bullpen. He delivered Brett from third. Kansas City leading 2-0 and sitting out at second base now. Big John. Brett Jackson throwing hard in the bullpen. Billy Martin's got to be in a tough situation. He's got a tremendous amount of options. His best pitcher on the ball club the last five, six weeks of the season have been, has been Grant Jackson. Yet it warrants for Doc Ellis to start because he's pitched so well over the season, the same way with Ed Figueroa. And they've got a guy in the, two guys in the bullpen, Kenny Holtzman and Doyle Alexander. Tom Poquette, one and one. If, if things don't work out well for his pitching staff, Keith Howard, he'll be second guess from here to Doomsday. Poquette, dangerous, with three runs batted in in the two games in Kansas City. He's two for six. Pulls it sharply down the right field line. Fair ball. Mayberry coming around third. Ball gets loose in right. And it'll be a close play at second. Throw is off the mark from Maddox. And Poquette goes in on his tummy. As uh, Jordan Mayberry scores from second base. And Kansas City jumps on Doc Ellis for three runs. I think by now you realize why Poquette was named by the writers Rookie of the Year. Look at this in replay. Looking so much like George Brett as Reggie Jackson has pointed out, just inside the foul line. A kid who was hitting at 338 until he crashed into the left field wall in Kansas City, suffered a broken cheekbone, was sidelined, had corrective surgery, came back, wound up at 302, would probably have hit much more had it not been for that accident. 
here to pitch now to Frank White, the Kansas City second baseman. White in the championship series, one for six. Three runs are in. Breaking pitch got just enough of the corner. We got a call. It's one and one. Doc has had some bad breaks here in the first inning. Got a couple of broken bat hits. One and two. A couple of broken bat hits. And then, of course, the ball of Paul Kent hit. I thought he hit a good pitch. Ball inside, and he slapped it hard down the first baseline. One and two pitch to White. Just outside. Whitey Herzog in the Kansas City dugout. Whitey had a tussle with one of the New York writers in the clubhouse before the game. Some thought it was nerves, but doesn't seem to be. Let's look at it. Three and two. Well, where I come from, Howard, when you get into a little tussle, where I'm used to being, when you get in a little tussle before the game, bet all your, all your money on the team that I'm playing for. <laughs> Three and two to White. Frank pops it up on the right side. First baseman Chris Chambliss under it, down the line, makes the catch, and the inning is over. But Kansas City, three runs on three base hits. And they take the lead, three to nothing, in the top of the first. As you look down on Yankee Stadium, from a helicopter, a beautiful autumnal evening. Yankee Stadium is filled with, what did you say, Howard, 57,000. Now the capacity because of new bleacher seats. That's correct. Just a few weeks back, George Steinbrenner, the colorful, flamboyant owner of the Yankees, together with a friend named Larry Fisher, put up their own loot to expand the new stadium. There had been certain unseated areas out in left center and right center field. They put in bleacher seats there, and so the capacity is now 57,000 people. A ragged start for the Yankees, Keith. Ragged indeed. In fact, a little bit of a pickup from their dismal collapse of two nights ago. Dismal from their point of view, not Kansas City's. His Top of key. the order for New York, Mickey Rivers, Roy White, and Thurman Munson. Mickey Rivers, two for nine in the championship series. He has been a catalyst for this New York ball club. Slides up the bat handle and he gets George Brett moving in from third as Andy Hustler delivers his first pitch in championship play and he misses ball one. But what a story this young man has been already and could be by midnight tonight. Just outside for ball two. Reggie, you've looked at him. You think if he can get the ball in the strike zone, he can be particularly difficult for New York. I definitely believe that, Keith. He's an uncomfortable kind of a pitcher, especially for left-handed hitters. He's a little bit wild. His ball moves back in on the hands. Right now, he's obviously concentrated about on Rivers because he's such the same way. Well, he went outside to get a two-ball count, came back inside with a fastball and got the corner. And that pitch there was moving inside. The ball was down. Andy Hester is the kind of guy that I call uncomfortable and awkward to hit against. At two and one, he's outside. George Brett very short at third base because Mickey Rivers will do anything to get on that first base. A lot of people forget that in 74 he had the best third best earned run average in the league 2.61 with KC 1-5 lost 6 ERA 2.89 not bad. But two call. Three he's got excellent two. stuff. He's got excellent stuff and he's throwing the ball hard right now. If he's on the night the Yankees are going to be in for a long evening. Well you know he's pumped up. Gotta be. Uh, and he's throwing the ball hard. Do we have our jugs gun downstairs? <laughs> yes, we do. We'll be reporting the velocity early on in the game, then in the middle innings, and then in the late innings. Right around 88 miles an hour so far. Tap toward shortstop. Red leaves it low. Fontex scoops low. Too late. That's it. for you. He's amazing. Just amazing. On Rio Grass at Yankee Stadium, it's a base hit for Mickey Rivers. On the artificial turf, might well have been enough. Because or a double move. <laughs> so much, yeah, that's right. So much faster. Watch it again, folks. Good Going pitch. Outside. Good pitch. Made a good pitch. 
And a great play from Patek. And a super stretch from Mayberry. Nothing you can do about the man's quicker than instant coffee. <laughs> Rivers has stolen 43 bases. Came to New York from the California Angels in the deal that sent Bobby Barnes west. And now here is Roy White, the left fielder. Just a bluff. Strike one. You mentioned before the game began, Keith, that Hasler had lost 18 in a row. Kansas City acquired him. Came in here to Yankee Stadium. I was here that night. He came on for Kansas City and pitched brilliant until the very late innings. You could sense he was finding himself. He's got to feel like that he fell into a gold mine the way things have worked for him. One strike pitch to Roy White. Missed the bunt, throw to first, safe. Almost had yes. Mickey Leenan. Good yes. throw, a little oh. bit hairy. No question about it. Watch the play at first. He almost got caught leaning, but is able to slide under the tag of John Mayberry on the snap throw from Buck Martini. You know, Roy White is at 364 against Andy Hassler in his career, 8 for 22. But it's a whole new ball game tonight. Awfully good, consistent ball player, as we pointed out earlier. A guy that is with you all the time. You can always count on him to do something positive for your ball player. There goes Rivers, the pitch foul. Things that don't show up in the box score right there. You see Rivers taking second base, and you see White trying to hit the ball behind the runner to advance the runner in the scoring position. The thing that the Yankees have to try to do now is not all of a sudden try to come back and make up the three-run difference. Exactly. Just chip along. Pick that up one at a time. Same thing in football. You're behind 14-0 in the early going. Don't panic. Stick to your game plan. It's the same exact thing here, Reggie. Nobody out. Lead-off man, Mickey Rivers. Singles infield to get on first base. Double play, Two double strike play. down to Roy White. Thurman Munson waiting. Andy Hassler pitches outside. One and two. And when you talk about comeback capacity, what a remarkable performance, Reggie, today by those Cincinnati Reds. What a great group of athletes. I wouldn't want to play against that ball club. Then you, you got them down, you got them beat, you got them out, yet they're not dead. You almost want to say, hey, man, why don't you quit? <laughs> At least let me win one game. Hester misses with a breaking pitch, and now it's two and two to Roy White, and he's taking a lot of time between pitches. And, and the best player in the game didn't get any hits in that series. But What's going to happen if he gets any hits? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Red Legs are celebrating and watching, I'm sure, tonight. Waiting for the winner of this one. Move to first. No play there as Mickey Rivers is easily back. The new Yankee Stadium. And it's really pretty. Looking right down from her war right would like to hit one. Left field bleachers. Outside and high. And it's now full count. Andy Hester had White in the hole. 4-2. And, and now he's gone full with him. And you know, no rivers will be sailing. Got to come in the strike zone right now. See the infield set in double play depth. Rivers can fly. There he goes, pitch swung on and missed, throw to second base, he's out! Super play. It Super was. Throw. That's the right word, that's a fair characterization. You can be nothing but short. Up. You can be nothing short of Super to get Rivers. The fastest man in our league, I may be wrong, I don't know anyone else, but look at the perfect throw, perfect execution. Look at Martinez get rid of the ball. Maybe he's only hitting 220, but this is what counts. You get Rivers off the base, and you've done a tremendous job for your ball club. Also typical of the way Billy Martin trails. Tra uh, uh, leads, trailing three to nothing. He sends the man on the three and two pitch. Aggressiveness. Now the pitch to Thurman Munson. And that many feel is a prime candidate for the most valuable player award in 1976 in the American League with a 302 average and 105 runs batted in. Big guy, 5'11", 195. Swings and fouls it at the plate, and it's one and one. I think one thing that goes along with being in consideration for the most valuable player he's had this year on a winning ball club, when you play on a winning ball club, every team comes after you. They save their good pitches for you to face, and ball players follow the paper. They know that Munson has had the kind of a year that qualifies him to be in the running to be a most valuable player. 
Comments from Reggie Jackson of the Baltimore Orioles. The appeal. And lost. And lost. It's one and two. Bill Haller, there are no appeals courts when those guys do the judging. Working behind the plate tonight, it's George Maloney. Haller at first, Art France over at second. Down at third, Larry McCoy. Left field line, Joe Brinkman. Right field line, Larry Barnett. One and two pitch to Thurman Munson. Foul. You see Buck Martinez sit inside, and you saw what Thurman Munson did with that ball. Smash that ball foul. He'll kill that low inside pitch every time. He was out in front of it then, but hit it well. Kansas City defense, George Brett, third base, Freddie Fontek, shortstop, Frank White, second, John Mayberry at first. Behind the plate, Buck Martinez. Left to right in the outfield, Jim Wolford, Al Cowens, Tom Poquette. One and two count, two out, nobody on. Kansas City leading in the first inning, three nothing, and Hassler's high to go two and two. Thurman Munson had 17 home runs. 1976. Against Kansas City pitching in this ballpark, the Yankees had five home runs this season, and now Hassler goes full again. Three and two as he comes high. You had mentioned earlier, Keith, about Hassler being in a rut, having some problems while he was while he was with California. You get with the same people all the time, and you get in a mental rut. And you fellas know, being around sports 20, 30 years, I don't want to say too much longer. We've been. <laughs> We've been in a mental rut but for you, 20 years. You know what, a, what the, the mental aspect of the game is. And the uplift of being with Kansas City has definitely helped us. Ball is hit to the right side. Poquette backing up, makes the play. And the Yankees are gone. River single. But the Yankees score no run on the base hit. Lead nobody after one complete inning. Kansas City three. New York nothing. That's a kind of fisheye view of Yankee Stadium as it is today. The great monuments used to be out on the field at the back of center field once Bobby Mercer started running around the monuments to try and find the baseball against an inside the park home run. That can't happen anymore. There's Doc Ellis. Here's Keith Jackson. Doc ready to pitch to Fred Patek, and he's in with a strike. Buck Martini is on deck, and we'll go back to the top of the Kansas City order for Jim Wolford as the Royals go to bat at the top of the second inning, leading by a score of 3 nothing at Yankee Stadium. Series even at one win each. And Ellis right in the pipe again. Two strikes. Good slider. Very good slider. <laughs> thanks, Reggie, for what's that? Reggie, thanks for going Yanks. Don't you wish it. <laughs> Two strike pitch is high to Fred Patek. And it's worth repeating, he's only 5'4 and 140 pounds. He does his thing brilliantly. Play shortstop for Kansas City. As you see, he's two for seven. He hits that to the right side. Chris Chambliss makes the play. Doc Ellis covers, and they get Pate. Nicely done by Doc. Very nicely done by Doc. Nicely done by Chris, too. Watching Ellis pitch to Pate. I told on Sunday night of Pate's depression over the death of his closest friend, Bob Moose. The young, the 29-year-old Pittsburgh reliever. Well, Doc Ellis knows Bob Moose, too. They were together, and Doc is going to Bob's funeral when it takes place. Along with Fred, of course. Keith? Buck Martinez, the Kansas City catcher at the plate. He has only one hit in the first two games, but he delivered two runs with that base hit in Kansas City. Three-run, eighth-inning Sunday night. Really locked the game for them, and Doc Ellis has the slider in for strike one call. One there out, you, nobody on. There you see the breaking ball. You don't see quite as much movement from your catcher for location, whether the ball will be inside or outside from the hitter. When, a, when your pitcher's going to throw the breaking ball, he, there's movement when there's a fastball. There's another breaking ball. He's got his slider, and he's sticking with it tonight. He Two got hurt with him. the fastball in the first inning. Two strikes now on Buck Martinez. There was a note about uh, Buck Martinez having the weakest arm of the Kansas City catching core. Didn't look like it when he threw out Rivers, did it? Not to me. Got him looking. Two gone for Kansas City in the top of the second inning. We'll go back now to the top of the order is Doc Ellis. You see his championship series record. Spectators are supposed to sit in the stands, Buck. 
It's not supposed to be at the plate. <laughs> but it happens to everybody. I ought to know I've struck out a hundred times by the last 40 years I've ever played. Jim Wolford hits it up the middle. Red Stanley cuts it behind second base and throws it out. Kansas City goes quietly in the top of the second inning. As they are retired in order by Doc Ellis coming up for New York. Vanilla, Chambliss, and Nettles are score after one and a half. Three nothing Royal. Judging by the way the Yankees are currently going, trailing three to nothing as we go to the bottom half of the second, the Yankees really do. There are the Yankee what legends. Sign? And what our that own sign? Are you going to hit clean up for the Yankees? I think I may have to. <laughs> Keith. Lou Pinella, the designated hitter. Number four man in the order. Leads it off for New York in the bottom of the second inning to be followed by Chris Champliss and Greg Nettles, the American League home run champion. There's some muscle at the plate. As Andy Hassler, 24-year-old left-hander for Kansas City, delivers inside to Pinella for ball one. I'll tell you, Pinella has owned Hassler. He's nine out of 20 against him in his career. Get over the pitcher's glove. Patek cuts it behind second. Great play. Yes, by great play. Patek. Yes, great play. Great athletic ability shown right there. Something that I could never do. I'd have got stumbled and caught up in my feet and fell down three times Reggie, between there and first what's base. What's so great about him is he's so close to the ground, Patek. He scoops those things up like a vacuum. Cleaner. Like a man named Scooter. <laughs> Scooter is in the next book. Reggie Jackson carefully playing politics with the great ones of the past. <laughs> first baseman Chris Shambliss up there right now. He's at 383 against Kansas City during this past season and Hessler is again a little wide for ball one. I always like to make note of the fact that he has such an exaggerated close stance. And there's Andy Hassler. And he's got some power. It's just high and outside for ball two. It's 353 in straightaway white. So you can reach it, especially and when you're as big as this guy. That's, that's the big difference here in this ballpark. Pulls it to the second good. baseman, White. White gets in by three yards and... You've got two out. So after that opening inning explosion by Kansas City, it's been relatively quiet. Here's another guy with a left-handed swing who can reach what is called in baseball the short porch in Yankee Stadium. Greg Reggie Greg is an interesting case. Last year and the year before, he hit left-handers with extreme effectiveness for a left-handed hitter. This year, almost helpless against him. That shows up in the statistics, Howard. There's no question about it. However, you get a guy like Nettles, and as you well know, being in sports, he's always a threat. He's led the league in home runs. Consequently, they pitch him a little bit tougher than they do the next guy. Upstairs, two balls and no strikes. We'll be, I think, probably starting to look at more breaking stuff now from Hassler as he gets a little looser and the confidence gets going. But so far, it's been primarily hard stuff. All right, let's take a quick look. It's 9 o'clock and what's happened. First game, Catfish on a dominant. Yankees 4-1. to one. Roy White key hit. Clinching double in the ninth inning. Second game, Royals 7-4. to four, Now leading 3 to nothing. Se Excuse me, the second game was 7-3. to three. Correction. Now leading 3 to nothing. We are in the bottom half of the second inning. Nettles up. At a 3-1 count. Yeah! Check this swing. Check at the third base on fire. He shakes his head. And Greg Nettles is on. That's the first walk of the ball game issued by Andy Hassler. I'm glad he didn't hit that one, Keith. Might have got a double. Now the batter for New York, Elliot Maddox, the right fielder, one for four in the series. Didn't play Sunday, played Saturday, and got his base hit there. With two out, Greg Nettles on first base. Hassler has a look at him. Pitches to Maddox inside. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WAST Albany, Channel 13. Keith Jackson along with Reggie Jackson and, of course, Howard Cosell. Who else in Yankee Stadium? And the pitch 
inside to Elliot Maddox. The house that Ruth built, the house that Cosell built. <laughs> Billy Martin of the Yankees, the dugout. It's chilly tonight. The temperature is going to be rather shortly, I'm sure, into the 50s. If it isn't already. Wind is blowing toward left. There isn't that much wind at the moment. 430 feet, the deepest part of Yankee Stadium. Two balls, no strike. And Maddox takes strike call. So it's two and one. The interesting thing about Hasla is that while a number of Yankees have hit him for good percentage, he has never allowed a home run to any player on the Yankee active roster. Very interesting, but you never know. They tell us that on the Jugs radar gun that Andy Hasler's throwing 91 miles an hour and that's a foul by Maddox at the plate. The count goes even, 2-2 two -two with two out. As you said earlier, Keith, he's starting to loosen up. And in the first inning, our Jugs gun got him at 88 miles an hour. So he's starting to throw the ball a little bit harder. Maybe he's loosening up. Maybe the overall effect of the fact that Kansas City, Los Amos, Otis, almost down, playing so loose now. They were a very tense ball club in Kansas City. They've almost got nothing to lose. They've loosened up. They're playing free. They're scoring runs. They're doing the things that they do best. Running, getting good pitching. The Yankees, the pressure on them. They're supposed to win. They're supposed to dominate. Stronger pitching, stronger bench, more power. It hasn't come through yet. They don't believe in the Kansas City outfield that matters to Paul Hasler. They give him left center. Foul at the plate. The count remains 2-2 two -two with two out and Nettles on first. Those those things are interesting for for me, for anybody, I guess, no matter how much you play the game. You see the center fielder here almost playing Maddox like he was a right like he was a left-handed hitter. This is what a scouting report does. Tries to find out where the player most often hits the ball. Going with the percentages. Yes, Struck him did. up. And so the Yankees come up empty in the bottom of the second inning. Collins, Brett, and Mayberry coming up top of the third for Kansas City. The Royals lead it three to nothing. That's New York City. It's in trouble, but there it is. You better believe. The view from the ABC helicopter, the George Washington Bridge in the background. Third inning action coming up, and here is Keith Aroos. Al Cowens, number two man in the order, leads it off to be followed by George Brett and John Mayberry. Cowens struck out swinging in his first trip to the plate tonight in the first inning. 24 years of age, got quite a future in front of him. He particularly continues to swing the stick the way he has been. What we see with that pitch right there, he establishes that he's going inside. Ball one pitch, ball foul, bounces into the Kansas City dugout and out. He did it again, Keith, the pattern of the first two pitches, and yet Cowan's notorious for chasing bad curves outside. Al struck out 50 times during the past season and hitting 265 against the American League pitching. Caps it over the mound, might get through. Nope, Randolph can't get much on the pitch, and Cowan's with good speed is aboard. And Al Cowan stole 26 bases. Uh, let's see, stole 23 bases in 1976. So he's a threat to run with George Brett coming to the plate. Keith, I don't know if you know this, but preempting the Bionic Woman tomorrow night. It's the first new Wonder Woman special of the year. Wonder Woman enters a beauty contest to try to trap Nazi agents out to destroy the United States. Then at nine, Beretta. Beretta's life endangered by a snoop reporter whose only concern is getting a story. Then at 10, Charlie's Angels. They go after a psychopathic killer and risk their own pretty necks. Now that's action. <laughs> George Brett stands in now as Collins leads off first and Doc Ellis gets strike call. To make matters worse, George Brett, the American League batting champion. Of course, there we see Al Collins along with Chris Chambliss on first base. To make matters worse, not only leading the league in hitting, hitting 332, he hit over 360 with men on base in 76. Delivered a base hit in the first inning. And in the process, delivered Jim Wolford with the first run of the ball game. So I, he has an RBI tonight. And I like the cut of this kid, Keith. The way he came back from those two errors in the first inning, first game. Shook it right off, didn't he? I wonder what it's like to hit 360. 
<laughs> You'll never know. I'll get a nosebleed if I ever get up that high. <laughs> It'll never happen now. Might have happened six years ago, Ridge. <laughs> In the thrilling days of yesterday, I'm going to change my name to the Lone Ranger. His longest hitless string, Reg, three games in two years. Don't know what it's like. Outside, they thought Cowens might go. And Pitched they're expecting out. it. They are expecting him to run. As Whitey Herzog says, they're going to try to continuously put pressure on him. Two balls and one strike. Will they pitch out twice in a row? Do you want to get behind three balls and one strike to George Brett with the short porch staring at you and you're already three runs down? Taps it. And it's foul. So Collins will go back to first base. Nobody out. George Brett at bat with a 2-2 count and Big John Mayberry waiting on deck with Hal McRae, the designated hitter in the hole. He was running. He was definitely running. George not the only hitter in the family. There's the on-deck batter, Big John Mayberry. Brother Kenny Brett, pitcher in the big leagues, playing winter brought ball in Puerto Rico, outfield and first base. Hits it further than George. Pitch to George outside. It's now full. Three and two. That time Cowens did not make a move. Three and two. Cowens will be running. He's got a throw in the strike zone. Brett will be swinging. And we'll see a little action. Action Keith Jackson. Here goes Cowens. Pitch hit over the middle. Second baseman Randolph. Off the back. Go to first. Go. Couldn't have been any more perfect if you hit it with a fungo, if you hit it with a batting practice bat, an infield practice bat, right at him. Cowens takes off, he gets a real good jump, but there's nothing he can do about it. Ball hit right at the back, Randolph gets out of the way in the great throw in the stretch by Campbell. Now the bases are clean and two are out, and the batter is John Mayberry. I'll say it again, it's 310 down the line and right, 353 straight away right, 385 up the right alley. Pitch is on the outside corner to John Mayberry for a call strike. And that's the way you must pitch. In this stadium, you better. Mayberry with a single in his first at bat tonight. He did hit the ball out to left field his first time up, Keith. You can see we've got a shift on Mayberry right now. The shortstop behind second base. The third baseman at shortstop. The second baseman in right field. 1-1 one, one pitch hit right past Doc Ellis. Fielded by the shortstop. And he throws him out. Fred Stanley with plenty on the throw to get in by a good stride. And so Kansas City goes in order. And at the end... Of two and a half innings of play, Kansas City three, Yankees nothing. This picture bespeaks the old Rogers and Hart classic. I'll take Manhattan, the Bronx and Staten Island too. That's the scene set right here and now. Reggie Jackson, Keith Jackson, yours truly, Howard Cosell, and Skunts within that crowded arena. Keith? Andy Hassler pitches, strike call to the leadoff man for the Yankees here in the bottom of the third inning, Willie Randolph. The second baseman, Fred Stander, the shortstop, will follow, then back to the top of the order for Mickey Rivers. Ball one. Funny how you misinterpret a lot of guys if you don't ever get to know them or don't ever get to see them or talk to them. Willie Randolph is a guy that's very quiet, doesn't like the limelight very much. And even when we're on the field, I always walk by him. He wouldn't ever say anything. Talked to me the other day. What a super guy and a super ball player. He's, pretty good. He's a special athlete, I tell you. He's a brilliant future in front of him. No question, Keith. You just look at him once. He's got the cut of an athlete. Two balls and one strike to count. On Randolph, leading off for the Yankees, bottom of the third. Kansas City leading 3 nothing. cut to the shortstop. Freddie Potek, long throw, and he gets him. Freddie Potek. With yes, quickness, sir. five foot four. The same scout that signed him signed a man named Willie Stargell. Stargell's about 6'4", about 225. <laughs> You can't say that guy's prejudiced, that's for sure. And then he signs the other guy that's five foot four. The guy's name is Bob Zuck. He signed Reggie Jackson, too. He should be, <laughs> should have a future himself. He's got a chance, doesn't he? He yeah. only made one mistake. <laughs> I'm in the booth. 
Andy Hassler looking in now to Fred Stanley. Up for the first time of the ball game. One out. Pitches inside. 52. There he is. Yogi Berra managed here in 64. Led the Yanks to a pennant. Though they lost the World Series to the Cardinals. Then the Mets. Now back home again. Fred Stanley. He became the shortstop for the Yankees on a day-to-day -day basis in early August. Played brilliantly for them. And got some big hits for him. Got some big hits for him. Two balls and no strikes, but one out and nobody on here in the bottom of the third. And Hessler in there for strike. There he is, Reggie Jackson's old teammate. Learned confidence from Reggie. Even learned to pitch from Reggie. <laughs> Maybe pitching tomorrow if the Yankees lose tonight. The goldfish. You're just missing. Three and one now. As Hassler having a little trouble keeping his pitches in the strike zone. It's one thing you like about a guy like Stanley. He knows he's not a power hitter. He knows he's not a home run hitter. He tries to do the things that he can do best. You see him right there taking the count full. The count goes to three and two now. Most hitters would have been swinging at that pitch, but Fred knows his job, get on base. Slap the ball anywhere he can. Be an asset to your ball club whenever possible. Three and two pitch. Popped up. Patek turns. Comes back. Makes the catch. Two down. How quick Patek is. Now, he turned completely around as he started toward left, circled back toward center, and in short center made the play. Here comes Mickey Rivers. Keith got the Yankees' only hit thus far in the game. That a slow bounded a pretty far tack, and he beat it up. They've only hit the ball out the infield once, haven't they? High yeah. pop, maybe play it. Buck Martini, George Brett, Brett calls. Yankees are gone. Bottom of the third inning. So. After three innings of play, the totals. Kansas City, three runs, four hits, and no errors. The Yankees, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Full house at Yankee Stadium. We move now. Kansas City sends to the plate. Al McRae, the designated hitter, Tom Poquette, and Frank Wyatt. Designated hitter, in case you don't know, just simply means the man is designated as the hitter. The pitcher is no longer a batter or a participant in the batting order in the American League. And hit him. Hal McRae is on. Well, he was 0 for 11, but he's on base now. And that's what counts. He a whole lot of steam on it. He took it on his shoulder, looked like. Just nipped it. Looks like it either might have been a backup breaking ball that didn't break or a fastball that got away again side. In a situation like that, he might see the hitter leaning over the plate. Might want him to get off the plate. Might want to establish a little authority. Sometimes those things happen. Al McCray now leads off first base. And the batter is Tom Boquette. McCray is running. And the throw is out. An outstanding throw and an outstanding play from Munson. You say he's going to be challenging for the most valuable player award. You don't keep slapping his face time after time. You're going to get back right. once in a while. Let's look at it again. McCray did not get the great jump. And Munson threw overhand and surely the ball there in plenty of time. Howard Munson's got the quickest release of anybody I've seen in the big leagues. Of course, I haven't seen the big man over at Cincinnati get rid of it very much, but he's Munson is truly super. Bench is just marvelous. A superb defensive catch. Count on Tom Poquette now. Two strikes. One out and the base is empty. Strike three ball. No, oh, very quickly. Two gone. Poquette didn't like it. Yes, he didn't but like that it. was a pitch. I but he didn't like it. Pitch, Ellis. Is he either oh, thought it was high or outside. You really can't tell from up here. But Poquet didn't like it. The young fella, you almost have to take into consideration when a young guy is he was trying to go away, and I guess he thought it was way because it had good heights. The ball had good heights. I imagine he thought the ball was outside. Two down for Frank White. Swing and a miss, strike one. Same pitch. A lot of times you get in a situation like that as a hitter. The count goes to no balls and two strikes. And the main thing they tell pitchers in the big leagues, don't get hurt with two strikes on you. Consequently, you almost anticipate a bad ball when it's 0-2. 
just low and inside. That right-handed breaking ball is extremely tough for a left-handed hitter to hit too because the ball, you almost give up on the times and zing, it comes back over the plate for strike three as Tom Poquet. White one for four against Doc Ellis. And excuse me, swing. Third baseman Nettles has trouble getting it out of the glove, but still gets it. And so Kansas City is gone in the top of the fourth inning. But the Royals have the lead over the New York Yankees in the third game of the championship series, 3-0. That's the Empire State Building. Shot taken from the ABC helicopter. Just another manifestation of what New York City is all about. On this, the opening night of the American League Championship Series, game number three, bottom of the fourth inning, and the Yankees trailing the Royals three to nothing. Roy White, Thurman Munson, Lou Pinello for New York here in the bottom of the fourth. Andy Hassler working with a one hitter at a three nothing lead, and he gets strike one called on Roy White. Three for nine. And two runs batted in in the series. The Yankee left fielder. Ready for attack at shortstop. Good scoop by Mayberry at first base and Bill Haller with a call. As you know, Reggie, that's the one thing Mayberry can really do at first. He's as good as anybody at scooping out the low ones. He's got good hands, and I don't know if we can see it here or not. Here we see the pitch from, from Hassler. The great play by Patek showing his... Uh, Ever great range. The position of the umpire. Right in on the play to get a good look at it. One down. The designated hitter for the Yankees. Lou Fanella. Uh, excuse me. Thurman Munson. And then Fanella moving into the on deck circle. Lou Fanella who has just. Banged away at Kansas City all season. Waiting in the on deck to see what Munson can do. Thurman with a fly ball to the right fielder. His first time up. There's Lou. He's moved around some, including Kansas City in his cups. And California. Here's the big man, Thurman Munson, three for ten and one run batted in. Coming into the ball game. Hits it hard toward Patek to shortstop. Patek's throw inside of the bag. But Mayberry again, he's 6'4", so he can cover a lot of territory over there. Hasler has them hitting consistently now on the ground. And furthermore, as Lou Pinella comes up, you're right, he was there at the birth of this ball club, Keith, 1969. Now in their eighth year, it's a great story, an analogy to the Mets when they won everything in 69. And reminder, they're not booing, they're calling him Lou. Now... Kansas City, ever since 1971, an expansion ball club is fifth in total victories in the American League. Vanilla hits it toward Brett at third. Fair ball. Lou almost falling down. Turning around first base will hold there. Excellent play right there by Wolford. Excellent play by Wolford. Somebody came out of the stands trying to get a hold of the ball as it came down the line, too. He stayed right with it. You see George Bett try to backhand this ball. It's a pretty good pitch by House, and the ball gets by him, goes all the way down the right field, and some problems with the fans. You see the umpire signal that it would be a ground rule double. Wolford stays with the ball, gets away from the fan, makes the throw, and he holds Pinella to a single. Now we'll have a little argument. But I got a feeling that the man in the red coat will win. Well, they're going to advance Pinella to second base. Here's Whitey Herzog coming out to discuss it as to whether or not Pinella uh, should be allowed to go to second base. There obviously was interference. The umpire had called it and signaled it before it ever happened. He may have signaled a little so little too soon. Uh, you got to give Wolford credit for sticking with the ball and holding Lou uh, to a single. I agree with that, Reggie. And obviously it was an unthinking youngster who went out there. But still you have to wonder about the kind of mentality that perpetrates that kind of act. Well, you can give Fanella a ground rule double. Yes, you can. With two out. Here is Chris Chambliss. As we have stated earlier, Keith, you said once he gets rolling, he's going to be tough. And he looks like he's starting to find the groove. The only time that Hasker has been in trouble is when there have been two outs. 
Reich on the outside corner to Shambliss. Now watch Vanella as he makes the turn at first. He started stumbling before he got to the bag. I thought he might have pulled a muscle or something. That's probably the biggest reason, one of the reasons he didn't go to second base, and maybe that's why the umpire signaled that he was going to get a double anyway. One strike count on Shambliss as Vanella leads off second. The ball is hit deep to right. Look at going back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Home run. Chris Shambliss. We said Saturday, we said Sunday, this man could hit left-handed pitch. He went into tonight's contest with five out of nine. Championship Series percentage of 556. He had a big year. One of the many trade acquisitions in the current Yankee regime. Just a good, solid ball. The home runs are so destructive. You, anybody you watch the game today... Here's the home run. Ball right down the middle, and Chandler gets the bat of the bat on it. Potek just doing his job, going after it, got no chance. The fans got a souvenir. And here's the American League home run champ. I was stating earlier, you see the destruction, the excitement that home runs provide. You saw what happened over today in Cincinnati. George Foster, Johnny Bench, and the momentum suddenly shifted over to Cincinnati. Maybe the same thing will happen here. We said we're in New York. We said we're in an exciting town. You see the crowd come alive all because of a home run. All the trouble for Andy Hassler after two were out. It's now a three to two ball game. The third home run of the season for Shambliss against Kansas City pitching. What you had mentioned about earlier, Howard, you had mentioned that there's only one city like New York. There's only one town like it. Well, Hassler now, the inexperience, will it affect him with the crowd starting to get excited being in the town of New York? Ball one count on Greg Nettle. Foul, one and one. That fouled off the ankle. That hurts. Ouch. Brader comes out to check see if Greg Nettles is all right. Count is one and one. On the Yankee third baseman, and the score is 3-2 as a result of Shambliss' home run at about 375 feet. By the way, 13 of Shambliss' 17 home runs on the season came off southpaw. So there is vivid evidence of how that man hits left hand. One and one pitch. Strike call, one and two. Little slider. There's, there's Chris. But left-handed hitters like that are few and far between. And so Gabe Paul, the president of the Yankees, has spent much of the last half of this season seeking a right-handed hitter. Two and two as Hester's high and away. To combat the Yankees' season-long relative ineffectiveness against lefties, Keith. And yet they're 42 and 32 on the season against Southpaw. 2-2 pitch. A little close. Well, he may have been a little shaken by the home run ball, and uh, I guess it's only natural if you are. After the Nettles Chandler hits a home run, you then run into the American League home run champ. Now what do you do? 3-2. and two. Strike him out, I guess. That's it. <laughs> That's what he did, but New York strikes back. They score two times on Chris Chambliss. Home run. Score now. At the end of four, three, two, Kansas City. There's the tip of Manhattan Island. And as you move upward to the left of your screen, those two giant buildings, the World Trade Center. Down there in lower Manhattan, the financial center of the entire world and the legal center too resetting this game we're going into the top of the fifth suddenly a one-run ball game the royals burst off with three in the first the yankees have just with two outs 
seen Pinella double and then a home run by Chris Chambliss. Andy Hassler, the starter, still on the mound for the Royals. And Doc Ellis, the starter, still on the mound for the Yanks. Here's Keith Jacks. Brett Patek, Buck Martinez, and Jim Wolford for Kansas City against Doc Ellis. Back called, and Doc looks like he's getting on to his game. He's got his breaking ball working real well. Brittany Patek is used to leading off innings, that's for sure. Hit it up the middle, and it's got just enough on it to wiggle into center field. Single for the Kansas City shortstop. And it's evident because he's got a 430 on base percentage leading off innings in 1976. And we'll see Buck Martinez. Now, will we see a bunt? Will we see him advance the runner over? Will we see a little strategy? I don't know what we're going to see, but I know this. Just coming into our booth, and it's an honor to have one of America's most distinguished citizens. We'll talk to him in a minute. The Secretary of State, one of America's number one sports fans, Dr. Henry Kissinger. But back to the flow of the game. Token throw to first by Doc Ellis. Chris Chandler's covering to keep Patek close. Patek, the leading base stealer for Kansas City on the past season. He... Goal 51, was caught 15 times, pitch to Martinez, no indication of butt. Ellis is high, ball one. I'm Martinez sure. taking a look now at the third base coach for Kansas City, Chuck Hiller, to see whether or not something is on. Patek comes off. I'm sure we're going to see some action, Keith. The pitch out, and it's two balls and no strikes. Now they almost can't pitch out. Two balls and no strikes. Will he hit behind the runner? Will he punt? He's got to get him over in the scoring position. Two balls and no strikes. We won't see a punt now. He'll be swinging away. Doc has got to come in with a ball to hit. Nettles backs up at third. Ellis goes to first. And quickly, action in the bullpen. Billy Martin's back to a one-run ball game. Any slippage by Ellis, he'll be out of there. Patek off, there he goes, pitch swung on and missed, throw! Yes. Patek beefing a little bit with the second base umpire, Art France, but he's gone. I, I don't know if he got it. He got a great jump, 51 steals, and only caught 15 times. Did he touch him on the hat? Is he safe? I couldn't see it from there. <laughs> I couldn't see it from there. The Mighty tension of a playoff in. game. Look at this. Whitey didn't like it a bit. Hold your tempo, Whitey. No time to leave this game. They're going to need you. Well, it's almost like it comes down from the top. Uh, you've almost got to let a guy blow off his steam because the heat of a pennant race. Let's well, I know he hit him with a right hand coming over, but I don't know about the one with the ball. Great release from Munson. He's got him. Puts that to the know. bag yet. No yeah, question. Yeah, he Good call. Him. Looks like he tugged him on his left arm. End of argument. Sit, settle down, Whitey. You already had a tussle with a sports writer in the clubhouse before the game. Hold yourself together. Learn new moves. Now there's Billy. What's the problem, Bill? Well, he's taking on an old-timer and a tough customer. It's and Bill Haller over there at first base. That's right. 16 years, the senior operator in the American League in his capacity, on this team at least. Yankee bullpen, Grant Jackson, the southpaw, Dick Tidrow, the right-hander, working for the Yankees. I told you, Billy's not going to let this thing get away from him if he can help. Well, you almost can, Howard, because the two fellows right there, well, Billy Martin proved his point, I guess. The two fellows throwing in the bullpen have been outstanding down the stretch. Grant Jackson, as I said earlier, the fellow on the left-hander there, the fellow on the right of the screen, has been the Yankees' best pitcher the second, the latter part of the season. And Tidrow has been the right-handed stalwart of the bullpen. Now Buck Martinez, a two-and-one, hits it to Willie Randolph. At second, Randolph throws it out, two gone. And they've got some momentum going. We'll see if they can keep it going. Here's another of those speedster pests who's been troublesome to the Yankees all season long. Hit Bedlam 300 against them. Stole five out of five times. Young Jim Walt. Walked in the first inning and scored the first run of the ball game. Grounded out short the first. His second time. He's one for two. Left fielder. Looks and it's low. 
I might add that Secretary Kissinger is still with us, enjoying the game. Ellis gets a strike on the outside corner, one and one on Jim Wolford. Reggie is telling the secretary of his longest home run ever. <laughs> I asked him about the luncheon and on September the 24th, I was invited to the luncheon hour and I couldn't make it. I had to bow out. I was greatly honored to, to have been invited. I framed the invitation. Just one like and two the letter I got from you, Howard. One and two pitch now. Wolford hits it to right center. Mickey Rivers fades back, makes the catch. Kansas City is gone. We had a couple of arguments, some excitement, but no scoring. After four and a half, Kansas City three, New York two. There are, of course, Secret Service men behind us, as you can see, but here is one of the top sports fans I've ever known in Govan. I remember you were here opening day when the Yankees beat the Twins, Mr. Secretary. No, I wasn't here on opening day. I was here on July 4th. You were also here opening day with Nancy, though you don't presently remember. You've had too many travels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. And Nancy was here as she is tonight. Uh, I, I asked you in Washington, we're about to go back to play, sir. Whom you would have picked, Lewis or Dempsey, both were there at the time, and Lewis, uh, Dempsey saved you by saying, Lewis, who's going to win this game? I hope the Yankees. I've been a Yankee fan all my life. Thank you very much, sir. It's an honor to have you here. Good to be with you. Thank you. You were here opening. No, I didn't. Elliot Maddox now. Willie Randolph and Fred Stanley, the bottom third of the Yankee batting order. And Andy Hassler out on the mound for Kansas City with a three-hitter going in a one-run ball game. Kansas City leading New York 3-2 as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. And it's ball one. Keith gets up Kissinger is still with us. He has now admitted that he was here opening day. <laughs> when Oscar Gamble hit an upper deck home run as the Yankees came from behind to win it. Elliot Maddox grounds it to Freddie Partek. Freddie's throw high, but he got him. In fact, it was relatively easy. As Maddox, I think, shows some of the problems that goes with that uh, sore leg. Reggie? Well, there's no question about it. Uh, the way things are rolling right now, they're definitely setting the stage for some exciting baseball. We've got a 1-1 one -one tie in the series. We've got a 3-2 ball game in the bottom of the fifth inning, and it's going to get hairy as we get a little closer to that final out. And here's Willie Randolph, Keith. Randolph grounded out to shortstop. First time up. Looks, it's high. Ball one, 8 p.m. Preempting the bionic woman, the first new Wonder Woman special of the year. Oh, oh, that ought to be exciting. Beauty contest, Nazi agents, all that kind of stuff. Two balls and no strikes now to Willie Randolph. At 9 p.m. tomorrow night, one of my favorites, Beretta. And then at 10 p.m. tomorrow night, Charlie's Angels, as they go after a psychopathic killer and... Gamble some with their pretty necks. All right on ABC. Andy Hassler now has gone to three balls and no strikes to Willie Randolph. The only time Willie has been on base so far in the championship series, he walked on Sunday night in Kansas City. Ball game tomorrow, 3 p.m. between the Yankees and Kansas City from Yankee Stadium Eastern Time. Now it's 3-1 and one to Willie. One thing that has really helped Andy Hassler tonight is he has not allowed a leadoff hitter to get on base ever since Mickey Rivers did it. The only thing that's hurt him is the home run pitch. He's pitched well ever since. Well, he loses Randolph. Yes, he does. The man with 37 stolen bases. The Yankees have got to start trying to put some pressure back on the Royals. The Royals have been the aggressors the last couple of days, Sunday and Tuesday. the New York shortstop. Ninth man in the batting order, Fred Stanley. Popped out for the short first time up. He's 0 for 1. Randolph edging off first. Top of the order, Mickey Rivers into the on-deck circle for New York. And a throw to first. Just 
walk two in the ball game. Goes hard to first. Elston Howard, Yankee first base coach, claims to Bill Haller. One of the buck ball didn't get it. Well, I'm sure they're trying to get a balk situation here or a balk move. And even if they don't, they just like Mr. Hasler to think about it. They would like the umpire to think about it to see if they can get a little psychological advantage. Strike called as Stanley up the bat handle, turned to bunt, pulled it back, and took it. Got a split screen right here, so we'll see just what happens. Andy Hasler trying to size up the situation. Keith? There we see our split screen. To see if Randolph fire. runs. Randolph off first. It's always interesting, little cat and mouse games that are played in these kind of situations. Brett coming in from third. The butt. Plate umpire. George Maloney looks at Bill Haller. And it's one and one, as the pitch was a little bit high. Hasler's a gutsy kid. You know he's been hurt. That's the bad back, really. Keith, and still performing so effectively. Allowed only two homers in 147 innings going into tonight's game when a Yankee hit a homer against him, the first Yankee to do so. Marty Patton and Tom Hall, right-hander, left-hander. Getting loose in the Kansas City bullpen. Count is one and one on Fred Stanley. I think the problem first. I think the problem that we have here is left-handers can get away with a balk. All they've got to do is just walk over to his first base. Stanley takes it high. It's two and one. I th I think you better explain that. There's the Royals bullpen. I think for the education of those who don't follow baseball that closely, we're in prime time. I think you better explain that. Okay, uh, Reggie. Marty Pat, he's pitched excellent baseball for the Royals the last six, eight weeks of the season. He's just about their number one starter for about the last three or four weeks of the season. Warming up in the bullpen. Well, he's not an overpowering pitcher, but he has done better than expected. Fred Stanley. Looks like he's been trying to butt the last couple of times, Steve. Try to get that runner over to scoring position. The Yanks are down one run. Two and one, one out. Randolph off first. Misses again. It's three and one. You get in a situation like this, uh, most managers like to tell you to just go on, put the ball in there, and let him bunt it. Don't get yourself behind where now you wind up with two two runners on base and only one out. If he's gonna bunt, he's gonna bunt. Make him make a good bunt. He might hit into a double play. He might pop that ball up. He might get two strikes on him. But now Andy Hasler is behind in the count. Three and one, and he's almost got to come right down the middle with a pitch that Fred Stanley can handle for either a bunt or to swing away. And he's going to bunt it. And he bunted it foul. So it's it, now ball at 3 2. Advantage to the pitcher. <laughs> Is this tennis? Now you're calling tennis. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Waiting on deck. Top of the order for New York, Mickey Rivers. He can fly. Little speed out there on the bases, too, and Mr. Randolph, number you wanna, 30. You want to keep this guy off base here right now. He's got to make a pitch. Give him the opportunity to swing the bat. You don't want Rivers up there because so many things can happen with Rivers on base because he runs so well. <laughs> the situation, as I said before, as Howard mentioned about the ball move, the left-hander takes his, his lead leg, his right leg, and takes it behind his left leg when he starts to pitch it can be a balk but if he does like that Randolph running pitch fouled away if he takes that leg moves it back past his his left leg his, if he takes his right leg let's get this straight if he takes his right leg picks it up and goes back past his left knee he must come to the plate he can pick his leg up and not bring it back near his left knee set it back down and now he can go to first base or he can go to home. But once he picks that leg up and goes back behind there like that, he's got to go to home. Ball hit to the right side by Stanley. Randolph easily to second base. Play made by John Mayberry. Stanley is up. Two gone now for New York. But they do have Randolph at the turn. And Mickey Rivers, the top of the order, coming up. But as the old saw would have it, Stanley did his thing. He did what he had to do. He hit behind the run. Just like a bunch. Things that do not go down in the scoring book. 
things that don't go in the scoring column, advance the runner in the scoring position. And like we saw today with Cincinnati, with Griffey up, when these guys that can fly make contact, all kinds of things can happen. Mickey Rivers with an infield single in two trips to the plate tonight. Hassler is low. What you saw Griffey do today was exactly what K.C. Stengel taught his players year in and year out. Hit down on it. Chop out. Get How that it, run in. It comes to the point where you realize what your abilities and what your capacities are. Rivers, make contact, slap that ball, and run. Hit toward Use the right side, speed. Frank White throws him out. Yankees threaten, but can't break through. So the score continues after five. Royals three, Yankees two. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Tomorrow afternoon at 3, right here in Yankee Stadium, it'll be game number 4 of the American League Championship Series between Kansas City and New York. The scheduled pitchers are Catfish Hunter for the Yankees and Larry Gura for the Kansas City Royals, the two people who squared off in the opening game. Catfish and Larry Gura. Whitey Herzog will use every left-hander he's got. Does not want to have to go with a right-hander for a starter in this ballpark. That's the battle plan. Larry Gura, the surprise pitcher in the opener, right. reminded Reggie Jackson of 1929 when Howard Emke was picked by Connie Mack against the Cubs. And Lefty Grove and George Earnshaw were bypassed. Reggie and I were there. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to say, too, that if they hadn't got those two unearned runs in the first inning, they may still be pitching. Fouled away by Al Cowens, leading off for Kansas City. Top of the sixth inning with the Royals leading by a score of 3-2 against Doc Ellis, George Brett on deck, and John Mayberry, the third man. Starting to get into the action part of the lineup now. Al Cowens, of course, followed by George Brett, and then the ever-presence of, of big John Mayberry. Swing and a foul tip in the Thurman Munson's glove. For strike two, Cowens, one for two, had a single. I'd sure like to say that Doc Ellis has sure settled down ever since that yeah, first yeah. inning. He's thrown up goose strong. eggs ever okay. since the first inning. Outstanding sinker ball pitcher, Doc Ellis. Greg yeah. Nettles falls down, up throwing, gets in. Nice play. That's a great play. He's been doing it all year, Keith, all year long. Golden Glove candidate. I think this goes to show you that you see some outstanding plays in the series here. See the championship series and you see championship plays. It brings the best out of ball players, makes them rise to the occasion. Look at that play. Shades of Brooks Robinson in 1970. Al Fitzmorris now throwing in the Kansas City bullpen as George Brett comes to the plate for Kansas City. He singled and scored and hit into a double play. Just low, ball one. Doc Ellis with 12 years in the Pittsburgh Pirate organization before being traded to the Yankees. It's in the right for a base hit for George Brett. He's two for three. What is he hitting? 700. <laughs> Coming into the ball game, he was four for seven. He's two for three tonight. So, give you an idea how effective Six he's been. Six for ten. That's right. Not quite 700, but enough to be troublesome. John Mayberry now, who is not hitting terribly well this whole season, but still represents enormous power at the plate. One out for Kansas City. And George Brett on first. Pull to the right side. Shemley stepped on the back at first. Throws to second, and they've got Brett hung up. And they tag him up. And the inning is over. Now that's alert play. That's a far cry from the Yankee defensive collapse of Sunday night. That's playing the way Reggie Jackson likes to see. It. Score 3-2 after five and a half, Kansas City. We're awaiting the beginning of the bottom half of the sixth inning. And in our booth at the moment, 
Another great name, the man who opened our show, singing Autumn in New York. To the scenes, the familiar landmarks of New York City, Mr. Frank Sinatra, his lovely wife Barbara here with him. And we will be talking with him briefly without interrupting the flow of the game. Roy White, up now, Keith Jackson taking over. Thurman Munson on deck, and Lou Pinella, the third scheduled hitter. 3-2 ball game, bottom of the sixth inning, Andy Hessler. Touch for three hits. Walk two, and he struck out three. They've got to get something going now, Keith. Things are moving along pretty good, and as soon as Hassler starts to fall, then he's going to get some relief help in there. Ball two outside. Look for it from a man, Mr. Consistency. He's been with the Yankees for 12 years, the dean of the Yankees, Roy White. He's got to get something started. Time's starting to slip away. George Brett smelling bunt at third. Coming in on both pitches, Al Fitzmoss cranking in the Kansas City pen. Pull sharply, foul. Ricochet is off the railing and goes up into the crowd. Pitching him inside, hit the ball hard, but it winds up to be strike one. I hope it was the railing and not somebody's noggin. <laughs> Two and one, the count now on Roy. Switch hitting left fielder. Hassler just low. Complains on the ball. Yes. Had a right to complain. Uh, anytime you see a pitch like that, a close pitch in this kind of a situation, guys want those kind of pitches. Some for the hitter and some for the pitcher. Temperatures rising. Three and one. The white. High fly ball. May go foul. Wolford chases it into the corner, but it drops in the crowd. The entirety of the outfield wall here at refurbished Yankee Stadium is padded. Right, Keith, and the left field foul line now is 312 feet along the foul line, a touch longer than it used to be. In right field, it's 310 feet. It used to be 301 feet. And those walls out there that you see, the padded walls, are about two-thirds higher, or three times higher, really, than a low wooden fence that used to be there all around the stadium. Full count now on the Yankee left fielder leading off here at the bottom of the sixth inning. Roy White, three and two. Hester loses it. All right, now you can look for immediate action, in, and they're getting up now in the Kansas City bullpen. As we pointed out, it's a game of accumulating tensions, and we have a one-run ball game. You're getting down to the late innings of a championship game. Neither manager wants to let this game suddenly explode out of his hands. Reggie? Well, this is the first time that the, that the Yankees have gotten a runner on base with nobody else since Rivers got on. Will we see Thurman Munson Buck try to advance the runner over? When you're in the home ballpark, you usually see the manager try to play for a tie because remember, being, being in the home ballpark, the home team always has the last at bat. There we see Marty Patton warming up, the right-hander, number 33, and on the right of the screen, Tommy Hall. Go ahead, Keith. Thurman Munson, the big gun for the Yankees, is at the plate. Hits it to the right side, going to the right corner. It is in there. That's the Thurman Munson. Roy White held at third. Munson goes in standing with a double. Nobody out. Yankees have base runners at third and at second is Munson double. There you see it. He stuck with Munson. Munson, he let him go on, swing the bat. Thurman tried to hit the ball to right field to make sure that he would advance the runner. If he winds up getting a base hit, fine. If he doesn't, then he gets the runner over in their scoring position. Exactly Fire right. Martin and Fire Thurman Munson. Exactly right, Reggie. And the thing is about Munson that he's done it all year long with consistency. The thing is, he has developed a superior ability to go with the pitch. Outside to right field, throw him low and inside, he'll kill you. Give him the high pitch, he can hit it out. Again, the fact that he does not hit the ball to left field, if he does, we've got a chance to hit into a double play. And it's 387 feet and 430 feet out in left field. Minimizes your chances for advancing the runner and for getting the base hit. Go ahead, Howard, take it over. All right, we're taking a look at the reliever, a conference on the mound. Perfect time to uh, have a quick talk with the chairman of the board, Mr. Frank Sinatra. And as I said, he's here with his lovely bride. 
We're now getting our camera adjusted. Frank, it's autumn in New York, and it's nice to have you back. And I'm glad to be back, Howard. I think Barbara is, too, because... Well, I think it's so beautiful. We've I never seen it. the stadium, either. It's the first time we've seen it, and they've done a hell of a job here. Yeah. They really have. And I brought you the moon up there. You notice that. <laughs> you also brought us the lyrics for the very opening of our show. What do you think of this game? Close, Tim? It's close. It's very exciting, and uh, uh, they got away quickly, as we know. But I think the Yankees can explode. You know, they can blow them up. They got a good team, though, Kansas City has. They really have a great team. Incredible. They're only in their eighth year of That's existence. Right. They're and... a good ball club. Yes, indeed. Listen, I've been designated to express personal regards to you from the president of ABC Sports, Rune Knowledge, who is down in the truck. In his flying <laughs> circus? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe exactly where he belongs. In the flying <laughs> circus, yeah. Thank you so much for coming in to say Good to see you. Hello, Rune. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I you, love Howard. it. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you both. Okay. Two more of the people who are out here tonight to see the New York Yankees against the Kansas City Royals. Never seen more celebrities at a heavyweight championship fight. Cary Grant is here. Pearl Bailey is here. They're all baseball fans. Just like in Oakland. It's where you see all the stars. <laughs> a different kind. We now have a new pitcher for the Kansas City Royals, Marty Patton, coming on in relief of Andy Hassler. And the book on Hassler, five innings, two earned runs, six hits, struck out three, and he walked three. So the big left-hander cannot go all the way as New York now with nobody out. Base runners at third and at second, and Marty Patton comes on in relief. That's four hits for uh, Andy Hassler. Marty Patton. He's been around. He's a veteran. He one time was a member of the American League franchise in Seattle, Washington. Now he's come back to Kansas City. He's, he's the kind of a guy, he's a, mainly a slider pitcher. Everything hard. He doesn't throw many change-ups. Good stride. I've never seen Marty wear anything but a short sleeve shirt. He comes right at you as a pitcher. When he gets in a jam, he usually goes to his slider. He has enough power at times to be a power pitcher and go on and try to rush the ball by you. Lou Pinella now has been pulled by Billy Martin, and he sends Carlos May to the plate. May has functioned as the other designated hitter for the Yankees in 1976. So it is Carlos May pinch hitting for New York now. Don't load him up. Leads off at third, Thurman Munson at second, and Carlos May will be on first as they will intentionally pass him. He's going to load him up here, Keith, to come out with the no-out situation to score still 3-2 to two and see if, make sure that he still has a force at any base. Well, they've got some dynamite waiting in the on-deck circle. That's Chris Shambliss, who's already hit a two-run shot for a home run tonight to put New York back in the ball game at 3-2. And it could well be that Whitey Herzog will make another decision to bring the left-hander out of the bullpen. Quite apart from the obvious strategy of the situation, walking May doesn't trouble that in a bit because May has hit 321 against Marty in his career. 17 for 53, three home runs. Of course, that was before May lost part of his finger and the home run became almost extinct in his batting arsenal. These are things that people don't know, we don't even know sometimes. Sometimes a particular hitter will hit exceptionally well off another off another pitcher. Maybe this is the case with Carlos Mayas. You have said, Howard, he's hit 321 lifetime off of him. Maybe he's, maybe he's had a little better success with Chambliss. Tom Hall now will be summoned from the bullpen as Marty Patton comes in, intentionally walks Carlos May to load the bases for the New York Yankees. Nobody out. Well, we've got a timeout. Let us take this break. Tom Hall now in relief of Marty Patton, who in turn relieved Andy Hassler. He's one and one on the year with one save. He has not pitched much. He was bought from the New York Mets this season back in May. Right. I knew him at the Mets very well. And uh, his, the scouting report on Hall is that he has trouble with his control and his curveball is his best pitch, but has trouble throwing it for strikes. If this be true and proves out, then they got real trouble with the bases filled. 
Roy White is over at third base. White walked to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning for New York. Thurman Munson is at second. He doubled to move White to third. And then Lou Vanella was pulled. Carlos May sent in on the pitching change. He was passed intentionally. And now we've got Tom Hall, left-hander on the mound for Kansas City to deal with Chris Chambliss. Here we had a situation here where we saw a great deal of strategy by one manager trying to outdo the other fellow, Billy Martin. Whitey Herzog, he got Lou Pinella out of the way. He wanted him out of the ball game. Consequently, he brought in the right-handed pitcher. He also got Billy Martin to use up one of his best left-handed pinch hitters for the latter part of the ball game in, in Carlos May. He's now faced with the fact he's now got the advantage of having Chris Chambliss having to hit off the left-handed pitcher. Will all the strategy that has come about or just taken place, will it work? Chambliss can ruin it all. Hit a home run off the left-handed Hassler, and lifetime he's three for three off Hall with two home runs. All right, Tom Hall ready, delivers to Chambliss, strike. The base is loaded and nobody out. New York in the bottom of the sixth inning. This is where you need nerves of steel right now. Bases loaded, you've got no other way to turn. You've got no bases open, you can't afford to walk, you can't afford a bad pitch. He's ahead, no balls in one strike. The pressure now shifts the Chambliss. High foul out of play, and now Hall definitely has the edge at 0-2. Definitely has the edge, Keith. You now see a situation where may not try to make throw a strike to him right now. If he does, he'll try to make a perfect pitch. He's got four pitches now in order to make a perfect pitch on Chambliss. And if he gives a ball, gives Chambliss a ball to get the fat of the bat on, to get the good wood on, then Tommy Hall is definitely at fault. He's All right, Reggie Jackson, let's see what happens. That two strikes. They go outside with it, wasted it, one and two. He will try to make a pitch. He may even run the count full trying to make a pitch. His longest turn for Kansas City, three and two-thirds innings. Back in June, Tom has not pitched a whole lot. 1976. Nobody out. Bases full of Yankees. One and two the count on Chambers. Kansas City leading 3-2. Tap to the right side. Frank White with it. Goes to second one. Run scores to third. And runs all they can. As May goes in standing to block the play at second base on Freddy Fartek. He gets the job done. You don't need a base hit. You don't need a home run. You don't Either a fly ball or a ground ball. It Just tap ball. over there. You watch now as uh, May, who is bigger than Fatek, goes in standing, and Freddie has no chance right here. So the run scores, and we've got a tie ball game at 3-3. Munson now at third base. Chris Champlis on the fielder's choice is at first base. Second is open. And your batter is the American League home run champion, Greg Nettle going to have to get real tough here right now. Greg Nettles is probably the guy in the league with the best fly ball swing in, in at least in the American League. He can really get the ball in the air. Consequently, 32 home runs. All he needs is a fly ball right now, even a ground ball, to get the runner home. To put this team ahead. One out. Nine away. Ball one. Tommy Hall's really got to be careful right now. Urban Munson leading off third base. Chambliss is at first. Ball one count on Nettles. With Elliott Maddox on deck. The situation here, Keith, where this is a very, very big, big important part of winning the American League pennant right now. Strike one and one. If he can get out of this inning with only giving up one run with the bases loaded, it's a, it's a success. It's a win. It's a victory for Kansas City. And there you see the expression of pressure. Latell and Mingori in the Kansas City bullpen. In case Hall is not able to handle the situation. One and one pitch. Get into left center field. It is going to drop to the base hit. Munson. Comes in from third, and the Yankees have the lead for the first time in a ball game at 4-3. Even then, Tom Hall was lucky because there would ordinarily have been men on first and third. Keith Chambliss had a hold up, even as the scoring runner had a hold up to see if that ball would be caught. 
Yes, and this may be the one time where we really notice the loss of Amos Otis. A Golden Glover, several years in the big leagues. The new position that Al Cowles is playing, normally a right fielder, has to hold up on the ball. Doesn't have the usual perspective that he's used to. The ball drops. You can see that even Thurman Munson thought it might have been caught as he held up at third base before the ball dropped, before he started his run home. Whitey Herzog to the mound. Tom Hall leaves. And so a fourth Kansas City pitcher will be summoned from the bullpen. Andy Hasler started. Looked very strong for a while, but the Yankees got to him. Marty Patton came in, pitched to one man. Now Tom Hall has yielded the go-ahead runs for the New York Yankees. We're at 4-3, and we've got a new pitcher coming. There are the totals on the ball game here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The New York Yankees scoring twice to take the lead, 4-3. And now you have Steve Bengori on the mound for Kansas City. He pitched an inning to save the game on Sunday night in Kansas City. He's a left-hander who is deemed to pitch better against right-handers than left-handers because his principal pitch, according to the scouting reports, is the screwball. He has great motion. He's an exceptionally good fielder. So let's see what Bengori can do. And for those of you not knowledgeable, the screwball is a pitch that if thrown by a left-hander moves away from a right-handed hitter. In the whole history of baseball, the two best screwballers by reputation and I guess by record two were first Gall Hubble and second Warren Spawn. Out at second base, it is Carlos May. Hit for Pinella. Um, excuse me, uh, Chris Jambliss at second base and Greg Nettles at first base. Looking back over the inning, Roy White started it with a walk. Thurman Munson then doubled. Carlos May walked intentionally. Wiped out on the fielder's choice. Shambliss now is up at second base as a result of Greg Nettles' single. Two runs home for the Yankees, and they're trying to blow it open right here. As Whitey Herzog is using his pitching staff, trying to stop them. The batter now is Elliot Maddox facing Steve Mengori. And with one out, Mendoza's first pitch, screw ball, just misses outside. Got to make a comeback here right now, Keith. If they don't, then they're going to be psychologically down. Again, we've talked about the factor of the, the psychological aspect, the mental aspect. The crowd will be in the favor of the Yankees. They'll have some momentum gone. And the Royals will possibly be faced with having, being down mentally. They've got to stop this rally, shut it off as soon as possible. Just outside. Two balls and no strikes to Elliott Maddox. Maddox in the game has struck out looking and grounded the short. With one out, Willie Randolph waiting on deck. Chambliss at second. Does not represent a great deal of speed. Nettles at first. And Gorey gets a strike. It's two and one to Maddox. They can shut him off right here. There's still only be a one-run lead, and with that short porch in right field and the very, very spacious area out there in left field, one run is just not a heck of a lot in this particular ballpark. Kansas City comes back with McRae and Poquette. Next inning. Close, but it's high, and it's three and one to Maddox. This is the pressure of the playoffs, the pressure of the championship series. 164 ball games. This is 165. The best two out of three will decide who is a champion over that kind of a season. Let's see if Maddox pulls the trigger on three and one. It is in the strike zone. It's hit high down the right side and drops foul in the crowd. Steve Mangori is not a power pitcher. He's a jump dealer. He gives you a little bit of everything, but he does not have the real high hardman. He's a finesser, Keith. He tries to keep you off stride, as Howard said. His main pitch to a right-handed hitter is a screwball. He'll try to make a guy swing at a bad pitch. He does not like to try to get into situations as he's in now. Three balls and two strikes where he's got to throw a ball in the strike zone. He's got to try and keep you off stride. There you see Greg Nettles. Go ahead, Keith. 
Oh, count three and two. Canvas off second. Edel's off first. Pitch is headed to right center field. Yep. It's going to be in there for a base hit. Canvas coming around third. He will score. Edel goes to third and into second base. In a double. Elliott Maddox. And New York now leads 5-3. That'll be tough now. If Let's Ellis get away with allowing a home run. Anytime you take the home run away, then definitely have a decided advantage in your ball club. They've now got to get a runner, and they won't be able to tie the score unless they get a man on base and get a run, get a batter to the plate. We did our well, own Frank's back in his seat. Time. And he said that the Yankees were an explosive team, and that's just what happens here. That has happened here, and every tactical move that Whitey Herzog has made in this inning has worked against. He put in Tom Hall, and our scouting reports on Hall were exactly right. Hall is not a pitcher on the record that you can have much confidence in. Put him in because he was a left-hander against a left-handed hitter who chews up left-handers. Mark Littell coming in now is an interesting young man. We, we had him earlier on, and Reggie talked about the fact that he was brought in at a very young age and taught to be a relief pitcher. This is a young man who tries to pitch low to everybody, has a good fastball and a hard slide. We'll be back in just a moment. you have lyrics for that, Howard? <laughs> Well, it's not the moon over Miami, Keith. It's the moon over Yankee Stadium. And it's a beautiful night and a beautiful sight. And so far, it's been a difficult time in this, the bottom half of the sixth inning for the Kansas City Royals. They broke swiftly, got three in the top of the first, and it looked like the Yankees had a hangover from their dreadful performance of last Sunday night. But they have inched back, scoring two in the fourth on a Chris Chambliss two-run home run. And now in the sixth, they still got a rally going. Three runs in, only one out. Men on second and third. Batter Willie Randolph, the new reliever, a tough, good pitcher. Mark Littell, and here is Keith Jackson. Eight and four on the season with a 2.08 earned run average for this hard-throwing right-hander. And Reggie Jackson, as they say in the trade, this young man can really bring it. Yes, he can. One out. Strike. He comes right after you, Keith. The big young farm kid from the Midwest. The Kansas City Royals have got the infield in, and there are no tricks in the trade right now. They've got to go right after him as we see Greg Nettles over there taking his lead off of third base. It's Littell and Randolph, and they'll go one on one to see who the winner is. Nettles on third, Maddox on second. One out. Yankees with a couple of runs and lead five to three. The pitch is high and tight. Randolph has not had a hit in this championship series. Now, did you see Littell snap that wrist on that throw, Reggie? He's throwing the ball real good. He's got real good velocity. He's the kind of a guy that doesn't know how to back off. You're just going to have to go after him and get him. And what's it say? How hard is he throwing, Keith? 92, 92 miles an hour. He's running it up there pretty doggone good. Randolph with the infield in. All he needs is either a high chopper or a little fly ball, and the Yankees have got it 6-3. One, one count, one out. Bud in front of the plate. Foul. We had a squeeze play. Good call by the manager. Squeeze play. I wasn't thinking about it. I wonder if anybody else was thinking about it. Good anybody call by Billy. He loves that. He's a reminder of when Leo DeRosha yeah. was managing. That's his Leo tactics. would go to that play again and again and again. That is a characteristic of Billy Martin. Try to get another run. Whenever you get one run, there's Billy Martin alongside of him, Yogi Berra. Whenever you get one run, the opposition always has to get two to counteract it. So you just keep piling up as many as you possibly can. Number one. Battles off third, Maddox off second. One and two count on the batter, Randolph with one out. Littell, who did not allow an earned run in 46 of his 59 relief appearances this year. Dips the bat, apparently, and caroms away. Count holds, one, two. The he pitcher got bat. a break on that. Yes, he did. Lucky break for the pitcher. They all count. One on one. One ball and two strikes with the infield in. You pull the infield in, and it makes a 256 hitter with runners on base, a 356 hitter with runners on base. 
Field with the young seven. fella from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, now living in Kansas City. And in some trouble here. Time to stall the Yankees. Swing and a miss. And he got him. Looks like he got him with a high slider, Keith. But again, let's give Mark Littell credit. He's just a young kid, 21, 22 years old, and he went right after him. You're either going to get me or I'm going to get you. So now you've got two out with Greg Nettles over at third and Elliot Maddox at second. And the batter is Fred Stanley as Buck Martinez goes to the mound to talk with the young right-hander Mark Littell. He's 6'3", 210, 23 years of age. When he came in on Sunday, Reggie, remember I told you he had a great ratio of innings pitched against hits, which is always the mark of a good reliever, an outstanding reliever. The mark of any good pitcher. You look at Tom Seaver, Jim Palmer, these fellows have 40, 50, 60 innings of no-hit pitching every year. He's got to go after Fred Stanley right now because he's got the ever-dangerous Mickey Rivers on deck. Oh, what a tie. He's, he's got to go, two on. Got to go right after me. I'll tell you what his weakness is. Mickey He's Rivers. bad at holding, not Mickey Rivers, as we look at Mickey Rivers, but Mark Littell, his weakness is an inability to hold runners on base, but he doesn't have a base running situation to worry about here. Well, he pops the glove of yes. Martinez with plenty of steam, but he's high with it, and it's two he's, balls and no strikes. He's humping it up and giving it all he's got. Uh, he knows he's got to, they, the Royals have got to stay in this ball game. There is no tomorrow. We've got a game tomorrow, but you've got to let it all hang out. I guess you could say there is no next week unless you win the next couple of ball games, two out of the next three. Balls and no strikes now as Fred Stanley takes a deep breath. Lucky to get away from that one. Ball comes in high and inside. He's overthrowing right now a little bit and not following all the way through. As you see, as you see, he's throwing ahead of his body, getting rid of the ball a little bit too quick, trying to throw too hard. He's almost got to lay this one right down the middle. You don't want to see Mr. Rivers at the plate. Lays it in. So the count is now three and one on Fred Stanley. He's got to lay this one in there, too, Keith. Well, he doesn't have to worry about a long ball. He doesn't have the most powerful hitter in the world to face, but he does have a kid who came through when most it mattered. From midsummer into the late going, at one point ballooned up to over 290, so he can hurt you. Well, we saw that Saturday. He got three hits. Right, he's four for seven in the series. Bottom of the order. High. All four bases are loaded again. The situation that comes from overthrowing a little bit. I know anybody that's been in baseball knows that he did not want to walk him to get to Mickey Rivers. Well, I just don't want to do that. He has the Philadelphia Phillies today. You get a guy that can run and so many things happen. There's just too many variables involved with Mickey Rivers at the plate. He can fly. Al Fitzmaurice stays at the Kansas City bullpen in case the country boy is not able to get him here. Mark Littell facing Rivers. Two out. Bases loaded. Yankees have scored twice. They lead 5-3. And scored three times to lead 5-3 in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Littell still reaching back. And misses inside. Over at third base, Craig Nettles. At second base for New York, it's Elliot Maddox. Down at first base, Fred Stanley. Nettles singled, Maddox doubled, and Stanley walked. And again, you've got a conference on the mound. And I'm sure Reggie Jackson, they're going to say to young Mr. Littell, as Galen Sisko, the pitching coach, is out there. It's a tip-off. He just wants to go out and settle him some. No question about it. He's a young kid. He's overthrowing right now. And you see Galen Sisko there, George Brett. And with our back to us, Buck Martinez. Just tell him, settle down. You've got good stuff. Give yourself a chance. You've got no chance if you walk him. Give yourself a chance and let your feelers do part of the work, too. Don't try to do everything yourself. Littell is the fifth guy. pitcher for Kansas City, and uh, Mickey Rivers is the ninth hitter in this inning. Kansas City scoring three in the first, New York two in the bottom of the fourth. Now they've counted three more times in the bottom of the sixth. It's a ball one count on Mickey Rivers. The base is full. One and one. A bunt in that situation with Billy Martin is not impossible.
Brett Short at third defensively. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. He can do a lot of things, Howard. He can bunt. He can hit home runs. Throwing a ball at 90 miles an hour. So he's still getting it up there pretty good. One and two now to Rivers. Runner's edge off. Two out. High pop left side. Should be a play for Patek. The Kansas City shortstop. Freddie makes it. And finally, the inning is over. And so the New York Yankees bat around. They score three runs as Kansas City goes halfway through the pitching staff. Hassner, Patton, Hall, Bengori, and finally Mark Littell comes on to retire the Yankees. And so Hal McRae, Tom Poquette, and Frank White will be the three hitters to come to the plate for Kansas City as we move to the top of the seventh inning. And the totals on the game for the Yankees. Five runs, six hits, and no errors. For Kansas City, three runs, six hits, and no errors. We've still got a lot of baseball left. We've got three more innings to go. It's five to three. Tomorrow night on ABC, our regular schedule, 8 p.m., we'll have something special for you. The first new Wonder Woman special of the year. From a beauty contest to all sorts of adventures trying to trap Nazi agents who seek to destroy the nation. Then at 9 p.m., Beretta. He's endangered by a snoop reporter. And then at 10 p.m., Charlie's Angels. Tomorrow night on ABC. Howard? I'm sure you recognize this young man. One of our American heroes in the recent Olympiad at Montreal. The world's greatest athlete, Olympic gold medal winner in the decathlon competition, Bruce Jenner, who may be the worst tennis player I've ever seen. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Bruce. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here uh, at the ABC booth. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here because we want to announce to all that you have just signed with ABC Sports and you will be working with us on our staff of commentators for future events and also in the world of entertainment. Right. It's a very good contract we signed. It not only has some sports things involved, but it also has uh, some things with Good Morning America and some, some TV specials. So uh, I really like it. I'm, I'm very excited about it because for the last few months, uh, I haven't had a job. I've been running around doing a lot of things and it's... It's nice now to have uh, some sort of direction now, and I'm really excited about it. Well, we're delighted, too, and we're going to keep you off tennis. I promise you that <laughs> after your display at the RFK. <laughs> That's quite all right. Maybe next year we'll improve a little bit. All right. Enjoying the game? I am very much. Good, tough ball game, as Reggie Jackson just said. A lot of time left for Kansas City to come back. Our thanks to Bruce Jenner. Ready with the action at the top of the seventh inning. And here, our play-by-play -play man, Keith Jackson. Gonna let Bruce and superstars. <laughs> Hal McRae, Tom Poquette, and Frank White now, and he's the only Royal regular, as you see, who has not hit safely in the series. Hal came in 0 for 7, having walked tonight. He's had a sacrifice fly and been hit by the pitcher. The New York Yankees leading by a score of 5 3 here in the top of the seventh inning. And McRae hits it high on the right side of the outfield and drifting over. Making the catch, Elliot Maddox. And there's one gone. We wondered how that man's going to pan out. Got a double, legged it in, got a hit a ball to right center, legged it into a double, showed us good speed, and it showed us some outstanding defense in right field. He so really the, got a big hit. The question mark is starting to leave. <laughs> It's not over yet, as you said. I'll tell you one thing. Doc Ellis had a long rest in the yes. bottom. <laughs> Absolutely. You wonder how it's going to affect him. If they keep swinging at that first pitch, we'll never know. Good pitch right yes. there. Got a good slider still working for him. That's been his money pitch for the evening. Well, his experience, his poise as a veteran, enabled him to sustain after the first inning. He came right back. Tom Poquette pulls it down the right side. Foul. And it's two strikes on Poquette as Sparky Lyle, left-hander, and Dick Tidrow, right-hander, warm up in the Yankee bullpen as New York leads by two. Right, and Martin will do that now. He doesn't want to dare let this one slip away. Any sign of weakening by Doc Ellis, and you'll have somebody else in there. No question about it. He gets a runner on, and you get a big hitter up there that can rock one in those seats, and Doc will say goodnight. 
two-strike pitch is inside. And low with one out and nobody on for Kansas City at the top of the seventh inning. He's really throwing the ball good, though. He's settled down into a nice rhythm. He's got five scoreless innings going for him, a string of them. He's got one out in this inning. and has been pitching well ever since the little rocky start. The Doc. Doc Ellis. It's also going to be interesting to see how long Whitey Herzog will go with Mark Littell. I foul left side in the crowd out of play. Count one, one, two. He's not past Tom Poquette yet. I love this kid as a hitter. Reggie pointed out Sunday when Poquette was the big hitter for the Royals. How similar his stance is based upon Charlie Lowe's instructions to George Brett. And this kid is destined to have a great, great career. Doubled in the first inning off Doc Ellis. And struck out looking. One for two. Swing and a miss. So Ellis strikes him out. Boquette leaves now with two gone and nobody on. There you see the picture of Doc Ellis right there warming up yeah. his hand. A guy I guess you could say that's been surrounded by controversy. I know I had a run with him earlier this year. I got hit in the head and... I didn't know what the heck was going on, what was up or down. I was hot at him. The Pirates have been hot at him. Started the game in Cincinnati one day and hit the first five hitters. But i got to say that when he's on the mound, when he's doing his job, he's one of the best. Now pinch hitting for Kansas City. A 15-year veteran. His name, Cookie Rojas. What a competitor. 37 years of age. Native of Cuba. Doc Ellis. Working on Cookie. He provided a great deal of leadership for that ball club, Keith, when he played every day. And when he didn't play, just over the pitcher's glove, second baseman Randolph comes in, scoops and throws, and Kansas City is gone in order at the top of the seventh inning. And so, we reach the middle of the stretch inning with the New York Yankees holding a 5-3 lead over the Kansas City Royals in... Game number three of the American League Championship Series. And Doc Ellis goes into the dugout. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Look out, Kansas City and Cincinnati. We'll be back in a moment. That picture really needs no words. The leading lady, the Statue of Liberty. Part of our ABC helicopter scene here in New York City. Well, the Yankees lead 5-3 to three going into the bottom of the seventh. What a game in Cincinnati today as the Reds relive the great World Series of last year. Trailing 6-4, to four, bottom of the ninth, consecutive home runs from George Foster and Johnny Bench. Then the bases loaded. Ken Griffey with a chopper. The Reds won the National League pennant 7-6. to six. Great game. Roy White switch hitting against Mark Littell. Looks at a fastball strike. As the Yankees come up at the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll be Roy White, Thurman Munson, and Carlos May for New York. White struck out swinging, grounded to short, walked and scored a run. Very much involved. In fact, triggered perhaps that New York explosion that resulted in three runs at the bottom of the sixth inning. One and one now, the count. Cookie Rojas is now playing second base, having pinch hit for Frank White. He's the, one. he's the dean of the Yankees. They were looking for someone to get him started, and Roy White pulled it off. On base, first base runner that had gotten on since Mickey Rivers with no outs for the New York Yankees. Bottom of the sixth inning. High pop, short center, center fielder coming in, and Al Cowan calls and makes the catch for Kansas City. There's one out. Now here's Thurman Munson. Here's the man who really got a big hit. After White walked in the sixth, he shot a double into the right field corner. That really set up the three-run round. He, he was trying to do a couple of things right there. Howard, a runner on first base, nobody out, making sure they'd advance the runner. Along with it, he got a base hit. But his primary job was to advance the runner. Wound up doing both. 
He's the official captain of the New York Yankees, the first captain since Lou Gehrig. So he's walking in some pretty dignified company right there. Swing and a miss for strike one. 186 hits in 1976. And let's make note of the fact that he caught 150 ball games or better. Littell, fastball, drill, left field, base hit for Thurman Munson. Don't ever throw that fastball inside to Thurman at that area. That's what makes a guy a good hitter. You go, Thurman hits the ball to right field. And Seems like the guy that looks to hit the ball to right field, but you lull it, he'll lull you to sleep, and all of a sudden you'll try to go inside because he went away lull last time to right field. You pull, throw that ball in and zing. Reggie, he'll kill he kill you get it up on the, the low and inside pitch. He'll kill you. You just got to be thankful he didn't get it up in the air, Howard. Had it been higher, he would have hit it out. Carlos May now at the plate for New York. Designated hitter from the left side. Walked intentionally in that sixth inning outburst for the Yankees. And Littell is in with a fastball strike. Tomorrow afternoon at 3 Eastern Time here on ABC, game number four with Catfish Hunter scheduled to pitch for the Yankees. Larry Gura, left-hander for Kansas City. High. Well, Littell looks like he might be going back to the same problem he had in the previous inning, trying to throw a little too hard. Getting a little wild with it. Uh, big mark sometimes, a young fellow will start to overthrow. 92, 92 miles an hour. Oh, that's swift. Oh, yes. <laughs> that kid's profile is the image of Kenny Boyle, the old all-star third baseman of the Cardinals. I've been groping to remember whom it looked like. Let's make you note of the fact that Billy Martin has really done a job with his designated hitters. 38 RBIs from Carlos May and 43 from Lou Pinell. 81 RBIs out of that position. Strike. Good pitch. There's Billy signaling right now. Which one is the real signal and what did it say, Reg? <laughs> you went by me again. One and two count as we look in from center field with Carlos May. Notice he's well up the bat handle. Lost a thumb in military service. Not have the power he once had. Got him. Struck him out with a blazing fastball thrown inside. Good pitch. Made a good pitch right there. He's a beauty. You talked about training men just to be relievers at a young age. We've had some of those. Remember Ed Raddatz of the Boston Red Sox? Dick Raddatz did I a mean, heck Dick, of a job. Yes, Dick, Tremendous job. Big guy. Here's a star of the night right here, Chris Chambliss. Big home run and a ground ball with an RBI. Three runs batted in. High pop. Drifting back. Buck Martinez comes to the dugout steps and the ball caroms into the crowd. Thurman Munson on first base. I suppose under normal circumstances you would not think that he represents great speed out there, but this big guy can run. 5-3 lead though, two out, he will be careful. Isn't too many things that Thurman Munson does that's normal. He's an outstanding player, he runs well, he's got a great attitude, he's a fighter, good guy to have on a ball club. I guess that's why he's the captain. More than that, he shakes off adversity, even as George Brett did. Munson had two bad throws Sunday night. He's playing a great game tonight and throwing brilliantly. Brett did the same thing after his two errors Sunday afternoon. Resiliency, that's the real test of a star ball player. With two out, Munson edges off. Latell works to Shambliss, swing at a foul tip at the plate as Munson was going. Of course. Billy will go. Billy will go when he's ahead. He'll go when he's behind. He plays a running game. Whitey Herzog likes to do exactly the same thing. They're very similar in that regard, just as we pointed out in the past two games. These guys, in effect, grew up organizationally trained together. Herzog originally signed by the Yankees. 
And the Mets organization, in my view, hasn't been the same since he left the Mets, where he had for seven years been director of player person. Herzog's been trained in every aspect of the game. Two strikes on Chris Chambliss. Throw to first. Munson stepping back. Mark Littell. In his second inning of work, they call him the country boy in Kansas City, and they really raise a ruckus when he comes in to pitch. <laughs> I noticed a little something out there in center field. Al Callens is playing Chris to pull, and he's a fellow that likes to hit the ball the other way. Get to the right side, into right field. Face hit. Munson takes the turn, heads to third. Will catch throw into Rojas. The Yankees have base runners at first and third. Not like I said. Chambliss is having a great series. He's 7 out of 13. He has three runs batted in tonight. Just a steady, tough, solid ball player. He's got five runs batted in on the series. Chris at first. Munson at third. And your batter now, Greg Nettle, who has walked, struck out swinging, and single. Got a great situation here for Nettles right now. He got a right-handed pitcher right now, and I'm sure that in baseball terms, as Lee May says it, he'll be trying to go where ain't nobody playing. He'll be trying to go where it costs 75 cents to get in the ballpark. That's down the left field area because they have swung well to the right side defensively for him, so there's a lot of room down the left field line. For trying him. to hit a souvenir. Runner's edge, two out, two on. And Littell is low. The left field at Yankee Stadium generally is considered a big anyway, where you have to play it, and you can see how much room they are giving as they the outfield swings way to the right. You can go crazy out there, and many people have. I remember when they put Elston Howard out there. They're giving him the left field line right now because they know that with the score five to three that Chris, that Greg has one thing on his mind and that's those right field bleachers where the people are standing. Inside as Nettles checks on it, he started to pull the trigger. You mentioned those right field bleachers, Reggie. I had mentioned that Mr. Steinbrenner and a friend had put up the basic beginning monies to put those seats in there, and they have given 2,500 of those seats to uh, the PAL, Police Athletic League groups, who come in there and sit there, a fine civic gesture. Two balls, no strikes. To Nettles, and is fouled at the plate. And it's, he is hurt. That's off the puppy, and that's the second time he's fouled the ball off his foot or ankle tonight. Oh, he's all right. That hurts. That really hurts. Uh, it's a little chilly out right now. Greg's feet, I'm sure, a little bit cold. And that right there does not help your puppies. It doesn't help the old feet, Cerizzi. The what? Feet. Cerizzi. Foots. Gene Monahan spraying some of that uh, stuff on him to stop the hurting. You can see he's trying to pitch him inside what I call a danger area. You go in there and you miss four or five inches and uh-oh, you've got a souvenir. You either got to admire Littell for going in there or call him not too bright for going in there. That's an area where you can get hurt. Well, this Saturday on NCAA College Football, we'll be in Knoxville, Tennessee for the Tennessee Volunteers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Big ball game for both teams in Knoxville, and you'll see it right here on most of these ABC stations at 3.30 Eastern Time. The Tide of the Ball. With, a little hit in there. With Keith Jackson. Calling the action. A 5-3 ball game. The Yankees trying to get some more. Two and one count on Greg Nettles. He's going to go back outside. Fouled away. Over to third base, Thurman Munson. The Yankee catcher who singled at first base, Chris Chambliss. Who singled with two outs. Nettles is the man who can put this game out of reach. 
put the icing on the cake, and this is what he'll be trying to do. This is the power man, the man that puts fear in you, the man, a game breaker. No Jay Simpson in baseball shoes. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Chambliss breaks from first, Nettle swings, and I mean he let it all go. Bow. He was trying to go where the grass don't grow, out in the cement, in the bleachers. Littell still throwing that baseball, according to our judge radar gun, at 90 miles or 90 miles plus. So he's absolutely stuffing it in there and saying to Nettles, here's my best thing. You've got to hit it. Interesting matchups right now. You get a little one-on-one -on -one right now in a different game. Two-two with two out. Campus going again, and again it's fouled away. And Chris getting a lot of exercise. He really is. Get a little one-on-one -on -one right now here with the pressure either on Nettles or the pressure either on Mark Littell. See who's going to be the winner. He's going to challenge him. He's going to come after him. Nettles, he knows, he knows Nettles is trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark to put the Yankee game out of reach, to put the Yankees out of reach. Get a little one-on-one, -on -one, a little basketball, a little tackle on the guard. Two-two pitch. Hit foul on the right side, and Ellie Howard lets go a little hot. Yankee dug out. Comfortable with a two-run lead. Kansas City broke out in front, 3-0, top of the first. Yankees came back with two in the bottom of the fourth, three in the bottom of the sixth. They lead it 5-3 on eight hits. Mark Littell, the fifth pitcher for Kansas City. The 2-2 two -two count, Chambliss running, pitches high. Bluff a throw, puts it over to third base. Thurman Munson back safely. In a situation like that, the runner breaks from first base. The third base runner is supposed to go down and stand on the line like Thurman Munson did to try to block the view of the catcher. If the catcher throws through, then the runner will take off and try to make it home. But you didn't fool Martinez. Martinez, again, the sign of champions, playing like champions. They concede second base to Chris Chambliss. That should be the... I think the first stolen base for the Yankees in the series. Right, and that should set up a walk situation. Because if I were they, I would pitch around Nettles. Then Elliot Maddox is due up, and then you would probably see Billy Martin go to Oscar Gamble, who's been a very good power hitter for the Yankees this year with 17 home runs. They have hit the longest home run hit by any Yankee here in the stadium this year, as I suggested earlier, on opening day when he hit one in the third deck in right field. But we'll have to see if they elect to pitch to Nettles. Base runners on second and third, 3-2 pitch to Nettles, yeah. go to the right side. John Mayberry will make the play himself. And so the Yankees score no run on two hits, and they lead two. And after seven, it is a 5-3 ball game, Yankees lead. We'll be back after this word from our local station. Looking down on Yankee Stadium from the ABC helicopter on an absolutely gorgeous October evening. And you see the game totals as they now stand as we move to the top of the eighth inning. And you're right, young men. The Yanks are indeed back, having won the Eastern Division and now fighting it out with the Kansas City Royals for the American League Championship. Freddie Patek will lead it off for Kansas City. Jamie Perk will be a pinch hitter, and then we'll see about Jimmy Wolford. Patek bounds it down the third baseline, where Steve Burroughs coaches at first and Chuck Hiller coaches at third. And Charlie has made a few plays down that third base area. And second base. Matter of fact, uh, Chuck Hiller, I guess, worked his way pretty much around the entire infield, every place except at first base. Doc Ellis misses inside. It's one and one to Freddie Patek. 
Chuck was a tough little hitter in his time. Yes, he was. With the Giants, with the Mets, he did travel everywhere. You see Doc. You see Doc getting instruction from his catcher, Thurman Munson, on how to grip the fastball. Doc throws two different types of fastballs. One that he will hold with the seams and a ball that will tail back into the hitter, back into a right-handed hitter and sink three or four inches. He'll hold one across the seams so that the ball will travel in a true flight. And there you see Munson giving him the indication whether to make the ball sink or whether to make the ball go straight. Patek, one for two. Hits a shot. And Nettles at third. Greg handles it. Throws him out. We can get some indication of how... How Ellis is working. Munson had the target up. Here's a play here. Sticks in front of a ball. Ball. A hard smash. And then comes right back out with it. With a good throw. One down. And here's a new guy. Keith. Jamie Quirk from Whittier, California. 21 years of age. He was the best left-handed pinch hitter in 1976. He's rated, in the book at least, as the backup to George Brett at third, but they tell me he's a great athlete and can really probably play almost anywhere given time to work on it. Well, the problem was that he came up as a, th he came up as a shortstop. Originally, he was offered a scholarship to Notre Dame where they expected him to become the varsity quarterback. And into baseball, and here he is. High foul, out of play. You'll again see the same basic actions that have come from Poquette, the same basic actions that come from George Brett. Very loose, keeping the weight back on the back foot. These fellows almost hold the bat in the same position. Brett, Poquette, and Quirk. That's a result of Charlie Lyle, the hitting coach at Kansas City. Quick reset. We're in the top of the eighth. Five to three. Yanks over Royals. One out. Quirk pitch hitting. Doc Ellis still in there. He gave up three in the first inning. The Royals assuming a quick lead. Yanks got two in the fourth on a two-run homer by Chambliss and then rallied for three in the sixth. Two and one pitch to Quirk foul right side and the count goes two and two. Keith Jackson along with Howard Cosell and Reggie Jackson. Baltimore Orioles, Yankee Stadium and they just showed the attendance better than 56,000. It's the biggest crowd they've had since Yankee Stadium was refurbished, redesigned in a sense. Yanks grew over two million here this year, Keith. Great year for them. Doc's got great rhythm going for him right now, moving the ball in, moving it out, doing just about what he wants to do. That ball got away. It won't make much of a difference. He's sailing along with six consecutive goose eggs ever since those three runs in the first inning. He settled down to take control. Once again, the aerial view of the new Yankee Stadium. It's reconstruction created some controversy in the big city. Controversy that, in fact, still exists. But it is a beautiful stadium. Jamie Quirk pinch hitting for Buck Martinez, and that pitch got completely out of control. Oh, he's, he's, he's been sailing along real well, quite well here, Keith. He may be running out of gas because he knows that he's got Big Dick Tidro and he's got Sparky Lyle down there, the short man, and he's toward getting toward the end of the ball game. He's only got an inning and two-thirds left. There's one out here in the seventh inning, and he's got to go for broke. This is a championship game. No time to save anything. Whitey Herzog comes out to talk to the plate umpire, George Maloney, for a moment. A little bit of a mix-up on the scoreboard as far as the ball strike count. That might be what uh, Whitey is questioning here, but the count is three and two. And out in the Yankee bullpen, the right-hander is Tidro, and the left-hander is Sparky Lyle. One out. Nobody on for Kansas City in the top of the eighth inning. Jamie Quirk swings and beats a foul again. Jamie's hanging in. I said he came up as a shortstop, Keith, which he did. He didn't have the range there. His best position, they felt, was third. But what are you going to do? Oh, we've got some noise in the stands. A squabble. Fan had a baseball. Policeman had it. And there was a little <laughs> right. argument as to who was going to get it. I think the policeman probably won for a souvenir, too. Strikes out on a low inside pitch. 
Now they're two gone with nobody on for Kansas City in the eighth inning. It's a great comeback for Ellis right there because he knows that he may have been just a pitch away from leaving that ball game right there. He's almost got to be taken out of the ball game if he loses a runner. Now you see Billy telling him, how do you feel? Or coming out of the dugout here, he was ask him, how do you feel? What do you have left? Because I've got good fellows. There you see him say, Doc, say, I'm all right. I'm all right. Doc struck out five Royals tonight. Yeah, just reading the lips, you can see, uh, see him say, I'm he not wants tired. In. Sure, he wants in. He allowed three hits in the first inning. He has only allowed two hits, three hits since. So he's been a commanding pitcher, drawing upon the reserve and the poise. I'm sure he's got something to prove to because of the trade. Jim Wolford, the leadoff man, top of the order for Kansas City. And left fielder looks at a strike. He's 0 for 2. They were beginning to sour on him at mid-year. But he came... There's the ball. He came back with seven straight victories at the tail end of the season. And we discussed whom we would have started in this game, Reggie. You remember, and you said, well, I think I'd have gone with Holtz, one of the best competitive pitches in contemporary baseball history. But today, Gabe Paul said, you've got to give this guy his due. Count now. Two and one on Jim Wolford with two out. And they give him an enormous hole in left center field. So if he can pull it with something on it into that neighborhood, he can run all night. Look at the distance between the left fielder and the center fielder. The center fielder playing well over in right center. And it's now three and one to Doc, Wolford. Doc may be tiring right now. You see him doing a few things different than he's not usually doing now. He's stepping off the mound a little bit more in between pitches. He's raising his arm, breathing on his hand, reaching for a little extra. The pride of wanting to complete the ball game. There he loses the man, and we just might see Billy Martin again. Doc Ellis walks Jim Wolford with two out. The Yankees leading 5-3. The batter will be Al Cowens, the center fielder for Kansas City. Al Cowens, not a particular home run threat. Only three on the year. Got a chance to see some good baseball right now. A little pressure on the Yankees right now. A little pressure on Doc Ellis. Al Cowens, if he gets on, you can see he's hit 293 with runners on base. Then we look at George Brett, Mr. Line Drive. Backed up by the big guy, Mayberry, and then McRae. So we could be facing a little problem right now here with Doc. He's walked two. Wolf is representing the second walk, and he comes high and tight to Al Cowan. Wolford has walked twice in the ball game. Back in the first inning, he got aboard, stole second, and scored. Well, he chased a bad pitch. Pitch was well outside. You know, Keith. I said Cowens had three home runs on the season. One of them came against Doc Ellis. <laughs> I'm sure Doc remembers, and so does Al. And that's why he's pitching a little careful right now. Foul away, it's one and two. Now he's Cowens. ahead and back in control. For the moment. Billy Martin prowling around in the Yankee dugout, though. He's beginning to have uh, growing doubts, I think. Here. Getting rested. Talking with Elston Howard. Kidrow and Lyle are warm in the bullpen. Shot caught by Fred Stanley. So Al Cowan lines out to the shortstop Stanley. Doc Ellis is able to contain the Kansas City Royals in the top of the eighth inning. So we've gone through seven and a half. The Yankees lead the Royals 5-3. Preceding a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. Watch the shot. Stanley goes up on his tiptoes and spears that line drive. Billy Martin will second. remember that, Keith. Mm. Tomorrow night, our regular schedule on ABC, 8 p.m., The Bionic Woman. Nope, we've got Wonder Woman, a special of the year. And then at 9, Beretta. And at 10, Charlie's Angels. And you look into the dugout. You see the Yankees. Catcher Thurman Munson talking with Fred Stanley, the shortstop. Well, I said Billy will remember that, Reggie. You know what I mean. He knows Doc is maybe tiring in the slightest sign of wavering. In the final inning with the beat of the order coming up, out will go Doc. Agree? I agree with you, Howard. One more look at the catch by Fred Stanley. 
great plays and great games in championship series that bring out the best in you. Bob Stinson is now catching for Kansas City. Mark Littell will face Elliott Maddox, Willie Randolph, and the Yankee shortstop, Fred Stanley. Bottom third of the order. In the home half of the eighth inning. And Littell, the fifth Kansas City pitcher, is high. But he's done a job. He has. He closed the door. He's done a job for him all year. Earned an average of 2.08. That's an outstanding ERA. Foul right side. Upper deck. Earn run average. You pitch nine innings. Give up one run. You've got an ERA of 1.00. You pitch nine innings. You give up a run and they make three errors and they score the run on the three errors. No earn run average. Let's reset this series. The teams died in one game apiece. The Yankees leading 5-3 to three at bat, the bottom of the eighth inning. No problems for the Reds in a magnificent ball game this afternoon. They clinch the National League Cup. 2-2 the count. As Maddox takes a strike, Elliott struck out looking, grounded to shortstop, and doubled at the ball game. And tomorrow afternoon at 3, we'll have game number 4. If the Yankees hang on, then they could, could conceivably lock it up, and they'll send Catfish Hunter out to do the job against Larry Gura for Kansas City. An unintentional swing tapped back to the pitcher and Elliot Maddox is out pitcher to first. Now Willie Randolph still hits in this championship series. He's walked twice. Reggie, I have to wonder, if the Yankees go on to win tonight and this game repeat is far from over, I wonder if Billy will toy with the idea of not starting Catfish tomorrow. No. Up the middle, base hit, Randolph, he's finally got one. What were you going to say, uh, Reggie? It's never over. you got to play him one at a time, Howard. you got to play them one at a time. He'll pitch tomorrow. And then he'll have it make a decision on who's going to open up the World Series Saturday. That's if assuming they, the Yankees win tonight and Catfish would have win tomorrow. But that's a lot of assuming. Yeah, I, I could tell you a little story about the word assume. What's the story? Can't assume. They got a big, tough road to face in the ninth inning, the Yankees. Brett Stanley, Yankee shortstop, 0 for 2 of the ball game tonight. Randolph on first, Littell goes there, he's safe. Stanley came in to this particular ball game, having picked up four hits and seven trips in the first two. I don't believe that was a pitch out. If it was, Bob Stinson sure was late getting there. That oh, was a pitch out. Uh, that was a pitch out. I hope he's not that wild, but now is an opportune time to run, that's for sure, because very seldom in big league baseball will you see two pitch outs in a row. Randolph edging off. Here he goes. Throw. Not in time. Stolen. An outstanding jump on that ball right there. 37 steals. There you see him get a good jump. What takes a look? He takes a look at the catcher to see if the fella has swung at the bat, swung at the ball. And there you see him get under the, under the tag. I thought Excellent. he stumbled there. Reggie. Excellent base running right there by by Willie Randolph Howard. If he takes a look and takes a glance, he knows if the batter has hit the ball. Therefore, he knows if it's a line drive or fly ball and can get back and get that one extra step. One and one the count on Stanley. Hits it out in the short right center field. The right fielder coming in a hurry and Oquette makes the catch. So now you've got two out as Randolph stays at second base. We've got Mr. Excitement coming to the plate. Mickey Rivers. Again in a big position. The Yankees trying to build as many insurance runs as possible because George Brett leads off, then John Mayberry, then McRae, and then Boquette. 
He has sat out quite a few games the latter part of the season. There you see him talking, moving, always doing something, always at the plate. Sat out quite a few games from the latter part of the season, and his stroke's off a little bit. He hasn't really hit a ball hard, hard yet. Also, his shoulder isn't right yet. And as we pointed out on Saturday, when he's not in there altogether, they're in trouble. He missed 26 games. They were 13 and 13 without him. Yankees hitting in the home half of the eighth inning, leading five to three. Rivers swings and misses. The count is one and one. Shoulder looked all right on that swing. He took a good cut. Morton got a little annoyed with him at one point. Thought he was making too much of his shoulder. He was, however, productive when he played, wasn't he? Yes. One and one. Hit to the right side. Cookie Rojas. Throws him out. And so the Yankees are out. In the bottom half of the eighth inning, they lead in the ball game 5 3 as we move next top of the ninth. All right, we go to the top of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Kansas City Royals, and they'll be looking at left hander Sparky Lyle coming on in relief of Doc Ellis. Right. We commented on that inning-ending line drive that was corralled by Fred Stanley. Look at Sparky Lyle's record, and Morton had had enough. He didn't want to risk Doc Ellis any further. Ellis with a truly fine performance, giving up the three runs in the first and nothing thereafter in the next seven innings. Tomorrow afternoon at 3, it'll be game number 4 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time here on ABC. And if the Yankees can get the Royals, if Sparky Lyle can get the Royals, here in the top of the ninth inning, then New York will have a chance to win the American League Championship. But Kansas City, after losing the first game in their home ballpark, came out, remember, swinging from the heels, looked loose and easy, and won big on Sunday night at home. So we'll see how the Royals react to it. And let me tell you, Sparky Lyle was a brilliant reliever the first half of the season. In the second half, he started making bad pitches, gave up a number of home runs in critical situations. Martin stopped using him. Lyle was burned up. They finally had a rapprochement. Lyle getting back in Martin's good graces, but he has not been anything like the reliever in the late going that he was in the early going. He's in there primarily at this moment because he's a southpaw going against Bretton Mayberry. Let's see how he does. The Reds were trailing by two going into the bottom of the ninth today. You fans remember. You know what happened. Look on Doc Ellis, eight innings, three earned runs, six hits, struck out five, walked two. There's Doc Ellis behind Elston Howard, all number 32. Remember in 1963, Ellie? Ellie, How uh, Ellie, Reggie, Ellie Howard was the MVP, number 32. Sandy Koufax was the MVP, number 32. Jimmy Brown was the MVP, number 32. What's your number, Rich? I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> the muscle men in the Kansas City batting order. George Brett, John Mayberry, Hal McRae. Brett, two for three tonight. We brought in a left-hander right here, but there's a guy, George Brett, that's not affected by left-handers. He's also used to leading off innings. He's got a 391 on-base percentage leading off innings in 1976 and the big guy Mayberry is not affected either. Sparky Lyle's first pitch inside and high. One thing as a left-hander for me about facing Sparky Lyle is his main pitch was his slider pitch. He would go through an inning where he'd throw 25 pitches and throw 24 sliders. There's Again. A, there's a fastball there. First pitch slider, second pitch fastball. Slider, slider, slider. That's his bread and butter pitch, and that's what he's going to see in this situation. He's I'll, thrown three pitches, I'll, all three high. I'll tell you, fellas, I have seen him do this consistently in the latter half of the season. He can get that tying run up there in a hurry. And he does. All right, George Brett, who had faced Sparky Lyle four at-bats during the regular season. No hits, but he had walked twice of it. Lyle throws four pitches, and George is on at first. Now the tying run comes to the plate. 
in the person of a man I think and I have felt all along from the very beginning it could play a major role in this thing and I don't mean to suggest that big John Mayberry might jerk one out of here but I'll tell you this he's got the muscle it's going to be tough for him Keith he's one for 19 versus Lyle in his career and he's 0 for 18 in his last at bat versus Lyle the first time up he got a single off he hasn't done anything since right and there's the slider and it's good for a strike Ball is hit. He missed it. But it's not going to go very deep into right. As Elliot Maddox drifts in and makes the catch. In right field, and you've got one gone. With he Brett hanging on at first. He missed it, and he knew it. Felt like he should have hit that ball a lot better. Now it is the designated hitter, Hal McCray, for Kansas City. With one out, and George Brett at first in the top of the ninth inning with the New York Yankees leading. A score of 5-3 and trying to get them to take a 2-1 to one lead in the series. You'll remember in the Saturday afternoon game when Catfish made his one mistaken pitch. It was to Mayberry. Reggie is on the inside half of the plate and uh, Mayberry hit under it as he did just then. Lyle is high to Hal McRae who is hitless in the series so far. And if you believe in the law of average and you're a Kansas City partisan then you've got some emotion going for you as he fouls that one back into the crowd to make it a 1-1 count. Kansas City is going to make a run at the, at the Yankees at all. They've got to get some production out of, out of Hal McRae. He's helped carry the ball club all year long offensively hitting 332, 73 RBIs. He's got to get some offensive production out of McRae or the Royals just aren't going to make it. Ball is fouled off on the right side. It'll go into the crowd down the right field line. Now it's one and two. And of course the reason Sparky's in there is he's absolutely unafraid. He's got the experience. Even though he's had late season difficulties, he is absolutely a fearless pitcher. He's a little tougher against right-handers than he is left-handers. There are a lot of right-handed hitters that do not like to hit off him because he throws that slider that comes down and in around the knees. Yankee bullpen still active. Tidro continuing to throw easily, and Grant Jackson, the left-hander, has joined him. Miles 1-2 pitch to Al McRae, and it's 2-2. Two and two. George Brett who walked on first, edging off, being careful. Pitch is fouled away by McCray. Count holds it two and two. He's high, Reggie. There you see him battling him. See McCray battling right now. He's not swinging the bat like he has all year long. But if Sparky keeps getting the ball up, then he's going to get in trouble. He's he gonna is give, high, Reggie. Give McCray the opportunity to hit the ball hard. You see our infield and in double play depth. They're thinking double play. They're thinking about trying to get this ball game over. McRae, one for six against Lyle on the season. Foul. Got that one down, Reg. That it makes that ball, a big difference. Got that ball down, and you saw Hal struggle with it, but he got the bat on the ball. Just trying to do the job until he can get a ball that he can drive. Get a ball he can handle. Get the fat, pat, fat part of the bat on it. 2-2 two, two pitch. Fouled away. Hal's hanging in. Yes, he is. He's really battled him. He's got back off the plate. He stands away from the plate anyway. He's moved off the plate a little bit more. Maybe he's trying to take away Sparky Lyle's number one pitch, which is a slider down and in. Hit to right. But playable. Elliot Maddox drifts over, makes the catch. So Maddox now with two foot out to the top of the ninth inning. And George Brett is still hanging around first base. Boquette is the scheduled hitter. You watch Catfish Hunter, and you played with him so many years, I just looked at him in the dugout. He may be the most placid-looking performer I have ever seen. Look at him. Chewing, you'll see a bubble blown any minute. Well, we didn't expect that. <laughs> He's Absol on emotion. Yes, absolutely implacable man. Tom Poquette will not hit. Billy Martin going to the mound to talk to Sparky Lyle. Out in the on-deck circle, swinging a bat, it is Dave Nelson, an infielder, a right-handed batter. As Whitey Herzog goes with the percentages, he sends a right-hander to the plate. Dave Nelson, instead of the left-handed hitter, 
Tom Poquette. Now Nelson against New York. Had no hits. Against Sparky Lyle. Lyle walked him and he scored a run. Well, there's not much of an omen in that message, is there? This is a gutsy guy who survived injury. He has a tendency to reach for the ball. And the opposition pitches are instructed to make him do it. He handles high pitches best. He's capable of power. 235 batting average on the year. As Red Edge is off and Sparky delivers, it is tapped and it's foul. Frank White was hurt earlier in the year and Dave Nelson came off the bench to fill in quite well for him. An excellent defensive ball player. He's got some experience. He knows the game and he knows what to do. He's not new to the situation that he's in now. He's been been a utility ball player and an extra man for the last three or four years of his career. So just about got the right man in the right spot. They need another base runner right now. Coming up on three hours for this baseball game. The Yankees are leading it five to three. Kansas City with two out, one on. As Nelson fouls it away and it goes upstairs. Sparky's way ahead in the count right now. No balls and two strikes and I'm sure he'll go to his money pitch the slider. He'll be trying to make a good pitch on Davey Nelson here, try to get that slider down and down in. Down and low. Try That's to get exactly it down and in. what Billy told him. You can be sure of that. He's been victimized with too many high pitches for home runs. The two-strike pitch with two out. That one's high. It's one and two. The ball's up, but it's completely out of the strike zone. Again, no balls and two strikes. You don't want to give a guy a good pitch to hit. Popped up on the right side. Chris Chambliss chases it, can't get it. It's in the crowd. There again is he's trying to make that the money pitch, the slider down and in. You're going to see it, so you might as well get ready for it, Davey. Sparky knows it, and everybody on both benches know it. You're in the big leagues for any amount of time. You know Sparky goes to his slider when he needs it. Pitches of record. Doc Ellis to win it. Andy Haskell to lose it. Sparky Lyle trying to save it right now for New York. Fouled off again. Scheduled pitchers for tomorrow afternoon's ball game at 3 p.m. Eastern Time here on ABC. Larry Gura, left-hander, Kansas City. Catfish Hunter, right-hander for the Yankees. Red Edge is off first. Nelson fouls it down the right side. There you see George Brett. Walk to lead the inning, and he's frustrated. He's watched two men hit fly balls to right field. So you'll be with Tennessee against Alabama Saturday afternoon, Keith. Monday night, I'll be in Foxborough, Massachusetts, the surprising Patriots against the suddenly reviving New York Jets. But this is top of the ninth, and the score... Five to three Yankees, George Brett on first. One ball, two strikes on Davey Nelson. And Keith, let's see what happens. Well, they're playing a little cat and mouse game with Nelson stepping in, stepping out. You see Munson making sure that Sparky keeps the ball down on the ground. He's getting right down with it. Fouled again. Down the right side. So Nelson has not been able to get around at all on Lyle. All of the foul balls have been off on the right side. I don't think Sparky has to put that much of the ball in the strike zone. That ball is in the hitting area right there. I believe Thurman is getting down on his knees trying to make sure that Sparky keeps the ball down and out of the home run area. Nelson doesn't hit many, but he's capable. At one this season. Hit toward the shortstop, Stanley. Goes to the second baseman, Randolph, and the ball game is over. And the New York Yankees have taken a 2-1 to one lead in the American League Championship Series as they defeat the Kansas City Royals tonight by a score of 5-3, to three, with Doc Ellis getting the win, and the Hassler taking the loss. And so the record crowd at New Yankee Stadium go home happy as the Yankees win the ball game, 5-3, five, 5 runs, 9 hits, no errors, Kansas City, 3 runs, 6 hits, 
and New Orleans. Back after this message from our local station. 